<laughs> of course, the test gets immediately goes to have some food. I am hungry. I just woke up. Ah, uh, that's understandable. I literally just woke up like 20 minutes ago. Alrighty then, everyone. Uh, I apologize for Tuskus not being here right away. He needs to go grab some food because he's hungry. Uh, for now, we'll be going into BRB mode. Uh, the test case is grabbing some food right now. He was right here just a moment ago. I am sorry, Tuskus. I mean, I the text. That's why we are currently in BRB mode. <laughs> I understand you're, you are mad, right, man? But he literally just, like, just woke up. So, you know, he hungry. Back to BRB mode. Um, I will be right back. My chair just broke. What the fuck? Yeah. Holy shit. This thing is fucking welded. What the fuck? Holy shit. That's, that's not clean too. What the fuck? Yeah, hold on. I need, I'll be right back. I need to take this out. Shit. You know I'm happy, but still.
One moment. I apologize for my Okay, I've returned. I am now using a folding chair. Also, Tia wanted me to send you this. <laughs> okay, you... Tex, you really need to send, stop sending Skaven after me to really inconvenience me. It's really rude and annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah now I'm having to use the lawn chair I grabbed for my dad <laughs> Not even a scaven, just a particularly obese mouse. <laughs> okay, that actually does look really cute. So yeah, now I'm in a very uncomfortable, uh... <laughs> uh, so now I'm in a fucking lawn chair because of the attacks, and I don't get paid for another five days. Ugh. I don't even think I'm wanting to pick up another one of those fucking garden chairs. Because the chair I picked up was like an outside, was like an outdoor chair. That was more than, than rated for me. I've only had the thing for like two months, maybe? And it just broke. It better not have been you sending a fucking mouse at me, okay? Makes you feel any better? I've been using stainless steel chairs that are older than I am. Well, I don't think that you're like 250 pounds. For literally years now. <laughs> well, the thing is, originally I was using like this old wooden chair, but it broke on me one day. I'm like, okay, yeah, no, I'm gonna need a new chair. So, my mom recommended, instead of me, um, 30 to 40 pounds less than that, eh, well, still. My mom recommended it because it's what she's been using for whenever she's on the computer or downstairs. So, it's been working for her, so she's like, oh, it will work for you. And I'm thinking, okay, that, that should work. I mean, it did work for like a month and a half. And now I'm down a chair. Also, I heard, I think I heard something from Tescus's end. <laughs> oh, god damn it, TS. Don't give me the risk, risk at leave, uh, thing, chart. To compensate this, compensate you for this inconvenience, I. You may receive a gift within one business century, depending on your backlog and tides of the war. <laughs> oh, God. Is that who I think it is? <laughs> the image Tia just sent. <laughs> is that who I think it is? 
<laughs> I think it's Saints Listing. It might not be. Oh yeah, she does. I'm trying to think who... Yeah, she tied it. <laughs> True. But, uh, yeah, while you were gone, my chair decided to do the big fucky wucky and break. Yeah, this is like a lawn chair graded for like 400 pounds. And the fucking, like, it, it's welded to like the, it's like, the legs are like all one piece with the armrests. And it's welded to the seat part. And the welding connecting the seat part to the back part of the legs broke. This completely snapped. Yeah. I mean, the chair has been, has been very finicky, but it worked. Because for some reason, this, for some reason, there's this back piece that keeps the structure of the, of the, uh, there's like this piece it built into the backrest of it to help keep it like straight. For some reason, that just kept bending for me. Yeah, I think I just got the like shit built one out of them all. So now I am currently within a lawn chair. <laughs> <Fuck six. laughs> Fair warning, if we don't finish the black glass the other day, I'm going to try to shit my own ass. We'll get through it today. This is why I use an armchair. Yeah, the thing is the last time I got an armchair, it broke within a week. You need like a like, for, like, my weight class, you need, like, a specially built armchair, and they usually cost upwards of, like, $500. <laughs> Fucking pull a rug of Dorn. Become Dorf. <laughs> Become Dorn. Dorn or Dwarf. I don't know. Both. Galbrecht. Black Templars. <laughs> Become Black Templar. Yes. <laughs> my armchair... <laughs> My armchair is from the 1940s, Jesus. Well, tell you, you're in Europe. These are probably a lot better built there in Europe. Yeah, we don't really have well-built antiques in America. Mostly due to a difference in uh, construction ideologies. Yeah. Like, there's a major difference in construction ideologies from the U.S. compared to Europe. In Europe, shit's actually built to, you know, last. Stay. In America, shit's built to last maybe a year, then you're supposed to buy another. Yeah. And because somehow I'm an insane person for not wanting to buy a new iPhone every ten fucking months. Mood. Yeah, I actually remember in high school where everyone would be getting a new iPhone every few, like every few months. I'm like, what the fuck. Land obsolescence is a sin, and I will shiv the man who came up with it. Steve Jobs. Well, time to get back into necromancy. <laughs> it, it's the guy who was in charge of Apple. Or That's Grave Robin. Ah, yeah, both. First. Probably both. Yeah, probably both. <sighs> God damn it. I'm gonna have to find my old tobacco. <laughs> What's the blasting charges? Eh, blast. Well, actually, does Steve Jobs have, like, a mausoleum, or is it a grave? I'm not entirely sure. Huh. Actually, you can look that up, I think. Steve J. 
Jobs grave. <laughs> ah, he's in Alta Mesa Memorial Park in Palo Alto, California. Oh, God, it's in California. Stephen uh, Paul Jobs. His middle name is Paul? Yes. Holy shit. I, I told... Okay, he lit... There is a epithet on his tombstone. Oh, I told God. you guys, R E Flash. Oh my fucking God. Actually. Of course it of course it says that. Yeah. Oh, I need to remember to make the candy float. Also, I just got a perfect double fighting train herald. I got perfect double penetrating unkempt herald. I don't know what that means. Uh, Borderlands. Oh. Borderlands 2. It's the unkempt herald is known as one of the best guns throughout the game, no matter what. Uh. And a double penetrating basically means it fires twice as many bullets. This thing already uh. fires like six bullets at once. So it Moon. fires 12 bullets and a single trigger pull. That sounds like the recoil will break your fucking arm, but I'm gonna go Oh no, it's barely any recoil. Oh. It's a torque gun. Ah. I'm gonna go get my food. I. <laughs> Why don't you go to the Z-General? <laughs> oh god. Oh god, that hurts my brain. No, no, no. Text, do not show that again. It hurts my brain. Oh, no, no. We spent, like, the last, like, three or four streams in the Brass Citadel, Tia. I can see why corn does it now. I want my move queen back so I can feed it something stupid again. <laughs> I know we spent a long time in stream um in the Brass Citadel. But we're today is the last day, okay? We're gonna push through it. Next year, what the fuck is this? Her hammer has some really fa fantastical races like <laughs> Aztecs, but they're lizards. Egyptians, but they're skeletons. The French, but they're f <laughs> the French, but they're humans. Ah, yes, the heavies. Yes, big guy with a minigun. <laughs> also, I wish I would I could build my own chair. <laughs> Actually, Technically, I could. My dad does have little tools, and I still remember most of the stuff from Woodshop. Uh, but then again, I don't really know. Eh. I don't really know for sure on, on that end, you know? Because on one hand, yeah, I could probably make a very sturdy chair and a very comfortable one at that. But then again, I don't really know what I want to build in terms of a chair. Because all I built in wood shop were boxes and a fucking top hat. Out of wood. I am back and I have food. Hello. We yeah. may begin at last. Welcome to PB Storytime where I talked about building a top hat out of wood. What the fuck? It was a, I was weird in high school. Or junior high. I mean, everyone was weird. I was especially weird in junior high, ex especially. Mm. Fair. 
the searches for me. I don't know why I wanted to make a talk hat in Woodshop. I just did. And the shop teacher was just like, you want to? Okay, let's do it. Oh, it's a rhombus kaleidoscope. Yeah, that thing just hurt my head. Can I start being set? It's well, that kind of stuff. Or you still here. make it, but it gives you design and the tuning slash metal parts. Oh, definitely look into that then, Dex. Fair warning, I am working with a uh, rather large cut on the inside of my lip. Ah, you're so fine, Don. Might be a little wobbly. You're fine. Howdy, everyone. Tech here. Just coming out on to inform you all of the passing of my host. As per his wishes, rip tax, may he live on in our golf ladders. <laughs> R.I.P. Tex, may he rest in piss. <laughs> oh, fucking Christ. Ugh. So yeah, we're all finally here, Tex. It is time to begin. Oh god, what's that smell like? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's funny because it's true. Hi, that's funny because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you stuck in Scottish mode? Because it's easier to talk like this, because I can put my lips out so they don't touch so much. Ah, okay. And that way, I don't run the risk of hurting myself. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I can always just talk like this. Yeah, okay. it's, a, it's entirely up to you. Oh, you me. Hi, Mario. <clears throat> All right, Johnny, here we go. <clears throat> <laughs> so I got this new t tabletop RPG plot. Basically, there's this flea app, except she's got huge boobs. I mean, some serious honkers. A real set of donkers. Packing some dabong hungaroos. Massive dahanok bangal kungaloos. Big old tonga hunger krugas. <laughs> oh my god, I'm glad the text decided he wanted to have you read this. <laughs> yeah. So what happens um, next? Yeah. Ah. Hornate Demon Valkyrie shows up one day with even bigger Bahanak hooves. Humongous humbugalo bungalow bungalows. <laughs> I fucking love that meme. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I can actually see if I can find the guy and ask him to actually do a reading of that. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Oh my god, I'll I'll see what I could do. I might be able to track him down and ask him if he can. Uh, I might be able to pay him to do it. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, going back to the paths you didn't take, if you went into the Nordic Mead Hall, you would have met the final member of the Cornet Compound, Frostfather. The salon would have had a cat cowboy with a rattlesnake gun and root beer, and then three individuals. Ankh would have just flipped his rifle safety off as a way of telling you, if you interrupt my mission, I'm painting the walls with you. The female would have brushed you off because, well, even in 40k, the muscular women think they're god. Finally, <laughs> the tribal warrior was a Conan the Barbarian-esque character who would have been serious or slightly jovial, depending on which I went for. <laughs> of course the women be believe they're god. Why else wouldn't they? I am gonna have to do a Oh, that's a hickey berry. Let's do a hickey berry. 
<laughs> That's a meds on. Eh. What'd you say? I was asking if those are meds. Ah, uh, yes. Painkillers. Ah, this okay. guy is starting to uh, actually hurt. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Which is not nice, because I've got one on both sides of my mouth. Oof. So I kind of had to eat food. Mm. Or talk. But, pain is a part of life. And it is a learning experience. And I will work through it. By the way, show these streams. Show Should these. Stream and repost them in the campaign meme channel just in case. Aye. Alright. <clears throat> Why not, boss man? I'll put, I'll show them on stream, you Give post them in. Taller output. <laughs> <laughs> 13 suits of Termi armor. <laughs> I still fucking love this one. Mm hmm. Slack who prefers short girls. <laughs> Hellhammer, Laz Cannon, Chaos, Obliterator, Obliterator Fires, Intense Physical Training, and Corn. <laughs> I fucking love that. And Spiegel thinks they Kevin the taller partner. <laughs> oh god. Nothing gets through this armor. Slag. Obliterated the virus. You know she's not coming back, right? Sounds of souls shattering like a mirror. <laughs> I really do feel bad for him. This is his current situation as he, ex as he has come to realize. Indeed, I'm stuck in, in goddamn motherfucking space hell being therapist for a bunch of blood hungry autists. <laughs> I can't say which is worse. <laughs> the space hell or the therapy? I hate going to it. I can't do it myself. Tescus, once I am done, I think, I think, think, therefore I was am. <laughs> ah, he shall think like a true skaven. Aye. Tescus is, uh, he's gonna, uh, he's going through some shit right now. And he's gonna go through a lot more shit. Also, ah. Uh... Mm. Meanwhile, five years into the future from today's game. Candy. Tchaikovsky's given. You can't use Doom Spheres as instruments. Tchaikovsky's given. Yes, yes, I can, Ken. 300 plus of them, in fact, fact. Candy. Tchaikovsky's given, no. Tchaikovsky's given. Tchaikovsky. Chai Cusk's Vescaven, yes, yes, always, yes, yes. <laughs> that probably will happen at some point. And I am just now realizing it. As soon as I bloody said it, it's Tukovsky. Tukovsky, no. Tukovsky, yes. Tukovsky, you can't use cannons as instruments. Yes, I can, and I will use 21 of them. Yes, I can. Twenty-one, in fact. <laughs> uh, Tukovsky was a mad fucking bastard. He is a also, fucking genius. I have decided that I'm gonna be staying with this accent because it's easier to talk with. You're fine, hon. So everyone's gonna come out Scottish. Too <laughs> fucking bad. At least I'm not British. <laughs> I'll still be voicing Candy. Mm -hmm. Ah, fuck, I'm trying to go to Scottish as well, fuck. Ah, candy will become Scottish too. <laughs> All will speak dwarfing. This is fucking the situation of Verna all over again. Oh god, we're going back to the painful caress for a moment. Oh god. Tex needs to set a background scene. I go ahead. Work your magic rat bastard, man. <clears throat> T 
attack flies through the holes of the underbelly, eventually finding his way to the forge. He walks in, a limp to his gate. It's clear the Skaven has not forgiven his friend for leaving him to die, and he's ready to kick the tail of that giant hat bastard. It's then, however, he sees him. At once, the, hats, the hatted Skaven looks over and runs at Tex. The engineer assumes a subpar battle stance, not at all expecting this, hoping to have gotten the first blow in due to his weakened state when he finds himself not tackled, but instead wrapped up in a large embrace. The others gave an apparently crying. <gasps> oh, friend ally tech, we thought presumed you dead gone. We searched for these weeks. <laughs> the autistic rat short circuits, as he did not expect this in the slightest, and all he can do is try to push the burn scar covered skaven off of him. Get back away, you great horned rat damned vile one! After the pair calm down, Smitch explains that during the final days of the siege, they tried to perform a counter-invasion of the foundry, which went poorly. Tech not knowing that, not knowing due to the fact he was long since buried under an entire hangar bay by that time. I see, see. Well, I apologize, Forge Master Smitch, even if, if you do smell like roast man thing. Scrumptious. <laughs> Eventually, the conversation turns to what to do. <clears throat> Glorious Skaven Tech is beyond infuriated to have to rebuild from scratch again! <laughs> but he will do so for the glory honor of the Great Horned Rat. So we work work to reclaim the lower holds, rebuild our numbers, rebuild my beloved foundry, and you can. Oh, oh god. <clears throat> Pardon. And get even against the filthy fur things. Tell me, Snitch, what day is it? The other rodent adjusts his hat, pulling out his gargantuan pocket watch. <laughs> It's the 255th of Turnvember, my friend ally. Snitch <laughs> drove his furred chin as he begins walking towards the corner of the forge, one arm locked behind his back. Then we still have time, time. From what the Great Horned Rat has foretold, the Captain Admiral will not be leaving for a while yet. Come, friend, we have work to do on foot. And with that, the pair walked into the long-forgotten corners of the lower hold, going to places not known to any outsiders. For there is plot planning. The greatest plot planning the fleet has seen in years, Dr. Fulcrum. <laughs> Why do I just imagine that the fucking pocket watch is like... It's it, twice the size of the ski. It? Yeah, it's like a mouse holding up a pocket watch. Like a human pocket I, watch. Indeed, it's like that equivalent. That's the size scale we're working on. I yeah. Know. <laughs> it's the size of a dinner plate. It's fucking huge. Three inches thick. Jesus Christ. And he has it beneath his fuck off huge Hashut hat. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I just imagine it's like di fucking dang Dimidome's hat? <laughs> but just yeah. wide. That's, that's accurate. <laughs> it's just wide. It's styled after a chaos dwarf. <laughs> Ah, oh, dear lord. Alright, I got all the equipment I could want. I don't think he takes some fucking talents as well, hi. Hey. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I almost forgot about that. I want to play a fucking game. <clears throat> I also realized something. Slag, Slag is going to need so many fucking skulls if he ever wants an actual throne of his own. And he will likely need to coat them in metal so they don't just shatter beneath his 10 ton metric his ten metric tonnage weight. However, I think luckily he will instead use just use the ones he doesn't offer to Corn for candy. Since she doesn't need a throne, she has the command throne. He will just lay them at the base, mind them up around it. Because lol, lamau. Why not have her sit surrounded by worthy kills? No better way for, for a coronate to show love, affection, or try to attract a mate like some fucking bird. <laughs> I mean, that's just how they think. 
I mean, accurate. I mean, Slag is acting like a fucking bird, and it's fucking funny. <laughs> I mean, it's an accurate way of him trying to show affection, and Candy actually enjoys that. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Man, someone needs to get slag some of Chaos Anti-Dementia medication and a Father of the Year mug. Although he has completely forgotten most of his first wife and his children with her. His own eldest son out there, a garageman as well. Oh, bloody hell. Tex, we better not have to fucking fight that kid. Because if we do, I am going to smack you upside the head. Mood. And thus the cycle continues anew. Continues anew. Indeed. Yes, yes, you crazy rat man. <sighs> After going back over the effects of fear I have, yeah, I'm pretty sure Tescus would just take a minus 5 to all checks against Slag, weapon skill, ballistics, willpower, etc. Especially after that display from both the trophy rack and the actual fight, indeed. As for Slag being uncomfortable when shifting his racks around, well, it's certainly not comfortable. But existing in his current form and body isn't exactly comfortable either for the poor guy, even if, well, even if he was complete in the material. But he's taken it on the chin and learned to embrace it. Uh, the bigger issue is the fact that he that using each piece that he has eaten is akin to using a specific muscle, and more importantly, you need to remember which muscle. And Slag has eaten a lot of war gear and weaponry. That's a whole lot to keep track of, and that means it's a bit slow to swap through everything mid heat at the moment. Yeah. Aye, that makes sense. It's like trying to scroll through your fucking entire inventory looking for the perfect gun. <laughs> I don't know that fucking, I know that feeling. Aye, which is why I usually just grab, like, three. <laughs> That's basically, you basically, basically described me five during months. Bioshock any time I play it. Aye. Uh, my usual armor, armory consists of short to medium range, which is usually an assault rifle, SMG, or shotgun of some kind. Yeah. Long range, which is... Surprisingly enough, usually an LMG, or a sniper rifle, usually in the bolt action configuration, and the fun one, which is either melee, explosives, or some weird wacky gun that I use more often than anything else. Yeah. I bloody hell. Going back over it, Candy owes nine insight to Desert Storm on the topic of her father. But that's for later. Oh god. 
Uh, I yeah, you're gonna have to uh, talk to Desert Storm a wee bit. Oh god, that's gonna be interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Currently, we have Tesca's trying to have an. Having to try to deal with a giant winged tomboy demon of death hugging her knees after burying her head in her arms. Emotional vulnerability is not a speciality of the Kriegers. Ah. Uh, oh boy. Not helped by the fact that I'm sounding fucking Scottish! <laughs> which is not the most comforting of accents. <laughs> it's not like Again. it's your fault. I mean, I, but still. But, I mean, hey, at least I'm not fucking British. Oh, God. Oh, tea and crumpets, laddie, aye. Oh, God, I'm still doing that. I'm Irish that time. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> it sounds like a British person making fun of a Scottish. It could be worse. You could be French. Aye, I could be French. Thankfully, I'm not. Wait. I think. <laughs> You don't know. If there, actually, sure. there might be something in there. You don't know. My family did come from that general area. But they're also German. So, I don't know. That's a mood. Do note, I am half Cajun. Oh, you poor fucking bastard. Is that bad? Uh, Cajun is essentially Southern French. Oh shit. It's swamp French. Cajun is bastard. Bastard swamp French, indeed. <laughs> Dear lord. Quite literally, <clears throat> it is French Canadian for Southerners. <laughs> I'm gonna let you read that, Tuskis. Oh, bloody hell. It's the result of the French and British hate fucking each other, only to end up with an offspring much to their regret. Then they left it in the swamp to die, only to their horror it survived off of gear, meat, rice, and stupidly spicy peppers, instead of dying in that mosquito infested swamp. Honestly, I quite like that diet. Gear yeah. meat's fucking delicious. Rice is also fucking delicious. I can do without the peppers, but fuck it, I'll get used to them. Does sound like an interesting diet. Mm -hmm. Also, reminder, this is true. <clears throat> Spare us, you pity alien. You gush about your connection with nature, your primal wisdom. But what has it brought you? Where are your marvels of engineering, your voyages of discovery, your great insight into the nature of the universe? Even at our basest, when we dressed as you do, dwelt as you do, hunted as you do, lived as you do, we did more than merely survive. We built wonders. We made great journeys. We forged epics. You have not. You speak so proudly of the plugs dangling from your little skulls, little realizing that they are but strings and you puppets. What little have you, you have accomplished your tribute to the wisdom of your goddess, who's nothing but the voices of your dead echoing for all eternity. She moors you to the past, serving as a leash that keeps you as little better than apes. Sad parodies of civilization that lacks that special spark to become something more. We've come to your world in search of resources. Whether your actions drive us back or we take what we want and move on, the outcome is the same. We will depart from your wretched planet, leaving you behind, 
and in a thousand years you will not have changed from this contact with another world. You will remain in your trees, hunting your prey, communing with your goddess until your sun burns out and your world dies. And above your tomb, the stars will belong to us. That's kind of powerful, man. Indeed. <laughs> and it's not even an actual fucking quote from the movie. No, it isn't. That's just, that's just some, some fucking crazy bastard made up. And it's quite nice. Like, the message of the movie is kind of good, but also, yeah. Also, like, yeah. Doesn't matter if you're in tune with nature or some shit. If you're stuck in the fucking past because you're a bunch of religious idiots, you're not gonna amount to fucking much. Also, I refuse to believe that a bunch of fucking space horses could beat a powered exoskeletal suit. <laughs> Especially when the thing's got a giant fucking machete stapled to the end of its fucking 50 cal gun. Or 20 millimeter grenade launcher. I don't remember <laughs> what the fuck the arms used. But it was a massive gun with a massive fucking sword on the end. And that shit would have stomped anything. Especially on that backwater fucking hell. Fido in darkness. Alright, let's see this. Right? <laughs> Wake up, you're dreaming. Things have gotten even worse. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's so fucking funny. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Ow. I'm sorry. <laughs> the stream has it has an audio peak. My headset does not. Apologies. Apologies. You're you're fine. But, uh, just... Yes, that is that is very apt. Considering Tuskus has been both dreaming and entirely awake this entire time. <laughs> Yep. Sleep paralysis and the warp are a hell of a drug. <laughs> he's probably gonna wake up and think that he has it. he's having paralysis demons. Probably. Or one day he's just gonna slowly rise up from his bed out of a long sigh and just say God fucking damn it. Another day alive. Aye. Essentially. So, Tuskus. Hey. Hello, Mario. Hello, Mario. Current situation synopsis. Hey. Kowalski, analysis. <laughs> That's the vibe I'm getting. Hey, kinda. <laughs> okay, I said you get done. God damn it, Tia. Here go with the Tia pose. Yeah, pause my post. <laughs> okay, that's me. Yeah. It's the exact same vibe I get from Deskis synopsis. Is Kowalski analysis. Deskis synopsis. Hey. You are in front of an upset Damon woman who has only known her current form and has no desire to be anyone or anything else. Slag is off on the ground, mostly buried, done with existing shit. All right. I have one. 
idea to fix this, but I kind of need you to not violently put uh, Beat Slag's face in for about uh, an hour. If you can uh, do that, Sphere, that would be greatly appreciated. That is asking a lot from her. Aye, I know. And I'm going to be asking a lot more. <laughs> this is my final Harry, Hail Mary, because this is all I know of. Because this is all I can fucking think of that might work. Yeah. What's coming next is probably not what anyone will, would be expecting. Unless it's Tex. Tex probably expects Harry to fucking entertain her up. Tex probably can see 15 dimensions into the future. No, he probably did. Sphere just looks up and nods her head as she puts her wings back as she puts her wings back to the wall. Alright. Thank you. <sighs> Time to go drag the fat ass out of that hole he's in. <sighs> Tescus cracks his knuckles as best he can against his gauss flare arm and begins walking over to Slag. Slag, you fucking fat ass. Get out of the ground, I've got something I need you to do. Oh, yeah. Sonic weaponry. Great. Oh, God. Indeed. Oh, God, that is actually kind of terrifying. I mean, it's a weapon that's going to be used in a right suppression, most likely. Or fluid, I suppose, for war is fluid. Ah, they say if they decide to stop using fire hoses. Radiation guns. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, it's either burst people's eardrums with massive waves of sonic pressure, or give them skin cancer. Or cook them alive. 
Well, I mean, cooking them alive is giving them the skin cancer because one of the weapons that Riot Suppression is going to be using is a giant fucking microwave emitter. Right. You hear a rumbling from the pit as you see one massive arm come out. <coughs> oh. The blades forming large surfaces to use as levers as he drags himself from the red colored soul soil. After rising to his full height, he shakes himself like a dog, dislodging a large amount of dirt before hawking back and spitting. You see within the if you don't even want to know. A shining stone glimmering in the light. <sighs> Bloody hell. Slag, why the fuck did you just hawk up a giant rock? Or whatever the hell that is. Yes, that is a diamond. You're fucking kidding me. How the fuck did you hawk up a diamond? It's a bloody diamond! You don't realize how much pressure a coordinate has within them? Uh, you know what? That's actually fair. <laughs> oh my god, Slag shits diamonds, doesn't he? <laughs> God fucking damn it. No, I think this is a special diamond. When my body gets pushed to its limits, the pressure and heat within my form grow absolutely immense. All of the heat from- Oh bloody hell, what did I just do? I dropped something on my feet. <clears throat> there we go. All, all the heat from all of my weaponry all at once, all the pressure from all of my mass, all the grinding and working against it is helps when I get into vigorous ex exercise, it ends up- Okay, so sometimes I eat something I can't digest. Normally, I can just expel it, but sometimes it gets stuck, and when it does, it ends up in its current place, uh, being the basis for a diamond. If it's something else, it forms a different type of rock. Right. Teskis is going to use the uh, long end of his mop to slowly, slowly push the diamond out of the massive uh, vial, and then just look up at Slag. Right, well, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's what Tia just said. Or just sent. Maple syrup is not lubricant, you fucking heathen. The diamond is the size of half a pea. Yeah. yeah, it's still impressive. I mean, I. It appears uncut, and with both curved inner facets, unlike what a crystal should form, as well as a strange yellowish hue where the light reflects. Huh. Slag, what exactly did you eat to make that thing? Because, uh, that doesn't look like any diamond I've seen. And, surprisingly, I've seen quite a few. That's the result of the hard part of some animal I ate. Not a particularly strong bone. I that explain it a bit. Can explain the yellow, but okay. anyways, moving on. Uh come with me. I need you to I'll explain when we get there. Just come with me. Follow me. So why did you need me out of the pit? You, young man, are going to fucking therapy. So come on. Let's go. <laughs> the creaker is going to start a therapy session. Yes! I wasn't joking when I said I was turning into the therapist for a bunch of blood-hungry autists. I know, but still. <sighs> Bloody hell. With that, uh, Teskis leaves the obliterator, and walks back over to where Sphere is. Impatiently tapping the end of his mop flail thing against the uh, grind. What?
slag following Tesca circa M42022, the, the 255th of turn Vember. <laughs> Accurate. Accurate. <laughs> Why does it look like a nerd like Big Daddy? Uh, I think because it is. Oh, dude. It actually looks really cool. Aye, it is. <laughs> Only oh, less nerd -like. nerd like. And more carnate. And more meaty. Why do I just imagine Slag in this mode looking like fucking Oogie Boogie from the Nightmare Before Christmas? <laughs> just a giant mass of jet black centipedes and metal bits. That's actually a pretty good, well, idea, I suppose, of how he looks. I can't be fucked. I can't be fucked to care right now. Just now the I had. He lumbers off to Tascus. Clearly unhappy about going to therapy as his various chain weaponry begins slowly revving and spinning, various power fields coming online before sputtering off, his barrels slowly spinning or reciprocating in their assemblies. Anytime Slag's uh, weapons get a bit too loud, Tascus just turns, stares up at him, points a finger into it, puts a finger in his face, and says, Quit it, you big fucking baby before turning back around and continuing to walk. <laughs> if Tescus can sit through therapy, so can Slag. Tescus is the one doing the fucking therapy. You think he's happy to be here? <laughs> no. <laughs> You get to see the trophy rack rise at his back, showing off what looks like an entire clan with a skaven skulls held on by ch chains and hooks and netting. But lumber on he does, until eventually you two arrive at the dame. <sighs> Alright, Slag, you sit ten feet away from her. I am going to stand in the middle. If either of you try anything... I'm gonna shove this fucking Gauss flare so far up your goddamn ass, it'll be sticking out your mouth. We are going to have some couples therapy. And I swear to God, if either of you try to get out of this, I will make the Wrath of Corn himself look like a fucking joke. <laughs> That's a fucking promise. Now then. Fair. This 
is the talking stick. Peskis holds up the bitch be good. Whoever holds the talking stick gets to talk. You get the first round with the talking stick. Alright, I want you to tell Slag how, why you're doing what you're doing. Alright? Teskis is going to hand her the bitch be good. And thus begins couples therapy with the talking stick. The fact they have to bring in the talking stick says something. This is the only fucking thing I could think of. <laughs> I'm not making fun of the talking stick. I'm just making fun of the fact that you have to bring in the talking stick. Uh, sorry, something is picked over my mic. I don't know what that is. Hey, no worries. Thanks, sir. Oh, that's just over again. The demon glares at Slag as Slag looks on, his body literally <laughs> fuming with heat, warp stuff, and carnate energies. You do realize you didn't even scratch me your entire spell bar, right? I don't give a shit. I will find a fucking way. Sphere takes the stick, and you get the strange feeling she wanted to bash him in the head with it for a moment, before going back to her side and sitting down. What do I do now? Alright, so it's fair. Why are you so aggressive towards Slag? In your own words, doesn't matter if you've already said this before, just say it again. Talk about what's wrong. Why do I imagine just a pair of couches suddenly materialize? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> a pair, like, two pairs, it's like a pair of- fucking laying couches that you see in the therapist's office. Or yeah. The guy's office. It's just office. like- Teskis is just on a, a fucking folding steel chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just two fucking lay down couches. One ab absurdly big for the mass that is- <laughs> that is the the slag. Hey. She sits up straight, doing the motions of smoothing out her dress despite wearing flesh-formed chaos armor. A slag sits, collapsing backwards onto his ass as the ground shakes.
slag is still leaps and bounds taller, Sphere is now much more manageable size-wise to Tescas. So I am Sphere. I am a client Valkyrie. I was created to serve and assist to serve as an assistant to a worthy champion. I am I am also an individual, one who my own one with my own thoughts, feelings, and desires. <clears throat> I would like in an ideal world to be treated kindly. To be utilized as a tool to be enjoyed as a companion both on and off the battlefield. Sometime, someone to talk to, to form a bond to, to help you, that is what I want. Slag continues exuding what is now turning into a puddle of strange fog-like residues around his legs, as most of it goes upward into the sky. Right. Sir, if you will please hand the talking stick back to me. Slag, I am going to hand you the talking stick, and you are going to tell me... What the fuck is your fucking issue with her? Because I have a feeling I know what it is, but either way, I'm probably still gonna fucking smack you. She balances it on one finger before flipping it into her hand and giving it over. Tescus then takes the stick and hands it to Slag.
Slag, meanwhile, just looks at you, holding a pilot light on the end of his arm, which he puts down to collecting fog. To the collecting fog, which, upon producing a spark, erupts into a mass of flame, scorching his legs and lower back. He doesn't seem to care. <laughs> Fucking damn it, Tia. <laughs> At least take me out to dinner. <laughs> what we'll, we'll can I let's see? He then reaches over with his left arm, his obliterated virus arm. You see the end of the arm morph horrifically, turning into a mass of tendrils and tentacles, which grasp it like so many Sienshians have done their staff. It looks almost comical in his oversized fucking hands. Damn. Alright, Slag, tell me why you can't even treat this last with basic fucking human decency. Besides the obvious fact that she's a demon. Aside from the fact she's a demon, if you bring that up, I will find a way to hurt you. <laughs> but I mean, you lifts up, so he lifts up Melty Gun. <laughs> Melty Gun just appears within your hands. <laughs> nah, the Melty wouldn't actually do much to him. He's fucking huge. I know, but it'd do something. I true. It'd probably just piss him off. Bag scab, bag slag, bats. Uh, using a fucking Meltus war gun. <laughs> I bloody hell. He grumbles that I'm clearly upset at being in this situation. Melta. Slag, I don't give a shit if you're upset. I am fucking stuck here. So while I am, I am going to try and at least fix your would be marital issues. Would be for same difference. <laughs> Slag Junior Smulty Melter, right. Indeed. Thirty one electric damage with a pen of twelve. <sighs> God, I fucking I hate Meltas, but I love him. <laughs> but I hate him. But I do fucking love him. You just see him mutated as fuck multi multi rise to his surface before sinking down once again. You spoke the word and ignited the synapses in his fucking lizard brain. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh, you fucking lizard. I wasn't even conscious on his part. You just said it and it appeared after igniting that part of his brain. 
It's just that fucking neuron activation meme. <laughs> Tech Priest mentions Melter, N Obliterator, and Neuron Activation. Yes, literally. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Alright, thank you. This makes you grilled cheese. Hmm. If, she, if a shark is, is rushing at me and it's pogging, I'm running. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Slag having tentacles. Ah, oh, thanks. Fucking stupid. One of the things. Yeah, you just saw it. Yeah. Hold on, I'll show you what I mean by pog shark. So, I was going to remind you of an important reminder, but I am now no longer allowed to mention it. So, I do not want to. Oh yeah, basking shark. I like them. They're giant, giant sea puppies. to get out of here. I want to eat the candy. I want to remember what I've lost. That, or I'd even be happy forgetting what I lost. At this point, I'd rather forget I even forgot than, hit, than to stay in this pain of knowing I'm missing something. I slag, I get that. But it doesn't excuse the fact that this woman is essentially fucking stuck with you and I don't think you've even given her the fucking time of day. Have you ever said hello to her? Have you ever just talked? You don't have to like her. You don't have to want her or anything like that. I am just saying give her a chance to interact outside of all this shite. Might be nice to have someone you can actually fucking talk to about shit. Yes, before I touched your face. Oh, God, I am going to fucking kill the bastard who came up with the idea of the blue fucking thing. Okay, fine. Okay. Slag. I get it. She reminds you of who you lost. That's not her fucking fault. Do you think she wants to look like people she doesn't even know? Do you think she wants to look like a woman she's never met? Two, in fact? Do you think she wants to constantly hurt you every time you think about what, about who she's based on? Do you think she wants fucking any of this? It's not her fault. If you're gonna be pissy at anyone, go scream at the giant man who took your fucking hands.
think I would like to hear the voices of those I left behind to be haunted by auditory hallucinations of those I want to flee to. And it was time, it was Testus, where I would hear, where I would be doing my training when the dear that self was able to give me a status report, asking me if there's anything in the woods or laying. There was times I heard my own children talk to me. Nothing bad, most of the time. Just Yvonne asking me how my day was. And I had to remind myself that they were not real. a chain weapon rev, which is very common here, and then straining my ears to see if that's the sound of the sun I cherish, which is to hit this particular rhythm and tone that I need on, reminded as a gamer ruined, it is him, which I can recognize anywhere, then that means I do two things. One, he died and is now stuck with me in this fresh hell, or two, he isn't, and my brain is playing yet more tricks on me. I do feel really bad for Slack. Great. Slack, I... don't know. I do not fucking know. I... I don't know. I don't know what to do here. I don't know what the fuck to say. I don't know how the fuck to do this. You cannot be alone like this anymore, alright? You are fucking killing yourself by shutting yourself away in that dormitory all, all year. For as long as you've been in here. You do know that the human brain requires, on average, at least an hour of human contact a day to stay functional. I don't know if that works the same in the warp. But your sanity is in fucking shambles, and it's not just because of what happened to you outside. It does? Yes! It bloody does! <laughs> like fucking hell. I don't care. Okay, listen. I get that you are hurting. I understand that, really. I fucking do. But... Do you think Sphere deserves to be the one you take that pain out on? Hmm? Do you think Candy would want you to lash out at someone who has nothing to do with what's happening to you? Do you think your children would be proud of knowing that their father is treating a woman who does not even want to do anything to hurt you like she's nothing? Do you think that you are doing the right thing? Do you think that you are doing something that your father would be proud of? That your mother would be proud of? Your children? Candy? Do you think that if they knew what was happening here, do you think they would be okay with it? You are torturing a woman who is forced to be attached to you. She doesn't want to be here. She doesn't want to deal with your bullshit, but she's forced to. 
and you are making her life hell. Hell beyond hell. You are taking out your problems on the woman who does not have anything to do with them. I know that it hurts. Believe me, I do. But the way you are going about this is not right. And then no, chaos, right and wrong are fucking concepts that are anathema to that. But that does not mean you can't act like a goddamn human once in your fucking life. All I am asking is that you get out of the fucking petty party you have been throwing for yourself inside that damn dormitory and give the woman a chance. Give her a chance. That is all I'm asking. You don't have to talk to her. You don't have to look at her. Just, I don't know, spar. A bit of a fist fight here and then. Maybe maintain your weapons in the same fucking room as each other. Something beyond sitting and letting your brain while away. He looks miserable. I just want to be left alone. I want to be out of here to be free. My children aren't here. I can't be very much upset. Despite the games we played, she always had a bigger heart than the two of us. My mother left the dead. My father, he was long dead. Died in battle like I fucking should have. <sighs> Slag. I am going to be fucking frank with you. I am going to be completely honest. Well, you see, I'm not sure if I actually can bring that up because I, I'm not, I don't quite remember if Teskis or Mr. Rice has uh, met Slug Senior. Have we? You guys have met his camp. Aye, right. It was bring, brought up that he did run it. Right, 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 right. Okay, so we know he's alive at the very least. Yeah. <sighs> but do you dare bring up that fact? I don't think I should. I want to, but I really don't think that I should. Yeah, they were told of him by the count, by Korn a bit, and even as a storm a little. Candy was told some individually who would have also told Teskis. Alright. And also, Candy has kind of met him. Aye, but Candy isn't here. That's the issue. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> we know, Tex. We know. I'm not gonna tell him just because I don't think it would help matters any. Because... Yeah, I don't think Slag needs to be worrying about that on top of everything else. Slag, I... Is the baby okay? Is it hungry? Bored? Tired?
Okay, I think he's calmed down a little. Hey, everything's okay. Everything's okay. I was always trained for birth. It was part of my whole harsh upbringing to suffer in silence. There is a lot of pain. Mine isn't special. Then came the guard, and that notion was reinforced twentyfold. <laughs> Little may I know about it. But this. I I know. I know. I know how it feels to be told to man up, suffer in silence. I know. And they know that eventually the pain gets too much. Sometimes it can't be dealt with quietly. I know that. I do. I served 16 years in the guard. Trust me, I know. I get that you want to be alone, but that isn't healthy, isn't safe. You being left alone is only exacerbating all of this. I am not sure how much longer I am going to be able to stay here. And knowing what's happened to you now, I, I cannot in good conscience leave you alone again. So even if I have to f fucking chain you two together at the goddamn hip and force you to talk, I will not leave you to suffer alone. Not like this, not again. I don't know how long it'll be until we can get you out of here. I don't know how long it'll take in the real world. I don't know how long it'll take in the warp. But we will get you out of here. And until then, I need to know that you have someone you can rely on to help in some small fucking way. I'm not asking for you to spend every day with her. I'm not asking you to spend every other week with her. I'm not asking you to talk to her. Just promise me you won't be alone like this. Because one, because I've seen what you're going through. I've seen it in a thousand soldiers on a thousand battlefields a thousand times by now. And eventually, it's going to either break you or kill you. And I'm not sure that if we bring you back, I'm not sure that if you let this continue, that there's going to be anything left to bring back. He just leans back. His eyes gazing up to the sky, the warp, despite not having a face, you can just feel the emotions radiating from him like radiation. Desperation, pleading to anything, 
with anyone. And then accept a bad offer made in this case. Is a chance to prove my worth, that I'm worth my gifts. It is also the least great thing that is needed on my armor and flesh to gorge myself on as a reward for a battle hard won. It is the only time when ceaseless hunger is abated. Tell me, Tuscus, what is about? used to be, I thought that a battle was just that, a battle, something to survive, kill, and move on. Then I joined the mechanics, and I didn't fight many real battles. My battlefield changed. Instead of trenches, foxholes, and artillery bombardments, it was Forges, manufactorums, and blueprints. And then I joined you. I was on the run for a long time. And during that time, the battlefield became life. It became how I survive. And eventually, it became a way for me to experiment. Now, I believe a battlefield is a test, a crucible, I suppose, a way to test myself, my weapons, my designs, my plans, my tactics, the people that surround me. Every fight is a test to see which part breaks the fastest, to see which part stresses the most, to see what needs reinforcement, what needs tuning, what needs enhancement. A battle is a test, a constant source of improvement, a constant ever-changing challenge to overcome. It is how I keep going. Because if I stop, then I let down both my parents. I let down my mother because I cease innovating and, up and improving as a tech priest. And I let down my father because I cease fighting as a soldier. A battle is a way for me to improve to improve everything, to see the flaws, and to honour my family. After what happened, it's the last chance I really have to make them proud. Then I have to ransom Tuscus. So soldier on to new battlefields. Fear not the dark, my friend. I thought the feast began. You look over and, and see Sphere look just as miserable as Slag. His condition and current state causing her phys physical anguish and pain. It's obvious she cares so much for him. Even if she wants to kill him, if this is by her own will nor by her design, it is unknown. <sighs> Slag. I... What about you, Sphere? 
was about to you. Hmm? Since we're all sharing, I figure it's only fair you get your two apiece. Next suddenly, oh no. I will say, I wish you trained a bit more. No man should see, should die without seeing the truest extent of what his body is capable of. I do, thank you very much. It's kind of fucking hard, admittedly, with all the shit that's been going on. But I do still train. And yes, Slag did just inadvertently quote Aristotle. No man has the right to be an amateur in the, matter, in the matter of physical training. It is a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is of which his body is capable. I agree. Fucking great Greek philosophers also bring wrestlers. Aye. They have the, they were the original school grandpas. I mean, hey, the Greeks were fucking. The Greeks were cool. I agree. <laughs> the official gym grandpas. I mm -hmm. love that. Also, this entire time I've written 10 more pages of my book for a story. Oh. Just because I have to be so silent. Mm. Nice. The silence does offend to me. He just sighs a long, massive exhale, which sees his entire fucking chest deflate before returning to normal after a hitch. It becoming apparent his under chest still causes him great pain if moved wrong. <sighs> Sly. Just. I don't need you to do it for me, alright? I don't... I, we do have a few options.
So, so we have a few options. We can ask for an alter for altering to an innocent daemon despite we can ask for an altering to an innocent daemon despite the wishes. We can ask Horn to store two more of my memories, either so I forget I have not, or to forget what's fear and or to forget or to forget what's fear and or to forget about sphere. I think we can start over anew this time without me killing the face with a fresh start. Or the third option. Remove the what? Yeah. Or to forget sphere. Aye, makes sense. I think his dementia is starting to kick in again. Oh, what are you finding? Hey, if you say so, laddie. I'll be right back and he go to use bathroom. I know what is. The third option being I do as all guardsmen do. I hold the fucking line. I soldier on, despite the agony it causes. I do what needs to be done, no matter and in spite of the pain it causes me. Oh corn, why why does it hurt so much? I suppose there's a... No. There's probably not a fourth option. I don't suppose there's a fourth option where we... Where you let Sphere try to help. Or try to let her help. Oh, Honestly, I'm reluctant to do any of these options. Option one is quite unappealing. Option two is even more unappealing. Option 2A is slightly less unappealing. And option three is probably going to result in even more damage. Fine.
it just laments out. Not really serious, more poetic to avoid. May my hand forget its skill, my brain forget to remember, my heart forget to fear. Oh, born, take me now. Hey, flag, careful of that shit. Fucking warp, you never know when someone's gonna take that shit literally. I think Candy would take a few issues with that and Frank. So uh, that one's off the fucking table. No more emotions beyond the entire rainbow of death. No more extraneous memories. Aye, yeah, Candy would have a few issues with that. We're not doing that one. It's for her, not me, I fight on, resist that call. Well, thank you. Fate is someone of the cruel of chaos to do to its followers. Some would argue as well, however, it is that it's a mercy. I argue that you shouldn't stick fucking needles in your brain. <sighs> My arguments are null and void, however. <clears throat> Alright. So. The way I see it. We've got about two, three options. None of them are, in all fairness, particularly appetizing. Appealing? Appetizing? Aye, same thing. Option one, we ask corn to wipe your memories of sphere. That could have its own unintended consequences, and of course could end up in you somehow accidentally touching her face and then we're back to square fucking one. We've got to come back and do couples therapy again. <sighs> Have returned and I bring also some food. We could ask Corn to specifically wipe your memories of what she looks like or of her face. That might do a bit more to help. Option three is, you know, option three, soldiering on, on and on and on, letting the pain build and build until you go fucking berserk and bite someone's head off. That is not at all particularly appealing either. And then there's my option three, where you let Sphere help, but that's probably not an actual option. Or try.
Force flag gets up, done. I've decided I will do what needs to be done. I will try. As thanks for what you've done for me, to be cordial. Sacrifice is what must be made, and Nova's false was bothered to make the toughest, hardest ones. If nothing else, despite my hard list of Nova laundry list of atrocities, I will try, no matter what. I always try to be a good father to all, even if I've forgot my own children. I keep them safe by secrecy. Even if I didn't always succeed, I tried not to play favorites once in Skatari. I will try, not for Sphere's sake, but for yours, and the invite default, and for my own. I can at least try to form an actual friendship bond with her. <sighs> Thank you, Sly. That's... Thank you. Now I can finally get out of this fucking place knowing that, knowing that you won't go absolutely batshit the second I leave. I mean, I knew you wouldn't anyways, but, you know, it's nice to know you've got at least some hope of staying sane in here. <sighs> Bloody hell. Fair, is that alright with you? Because I I don't know how much more I'll be able to do here and I am I am really getting tired of staying right where we are for this long. Fair looks unhappy with the situation, or at least with the fact that he isn't doing this for her sake, either as a person or as a tool, but accepting of it. Oh my god.
One moment, sorry. This, this is the most I've been able to get from him since that first little bit after we were introduced. I knew there was a lot to unpack. I didn't know if the true extent of it or the severity of it. However, it hurts me so to see him like this. And if this is what I can get, I'll so I can actually help him, so be it. I'll take what I can get. Thank you, Alexander Teskis of Creek, for setting up all this, and it will, it would not be have been possible without you. I, the least I can do, honestly. Slag deserves better than this hell pit, and you deserve better than the lot you've been given. Now I've got to see him. Now then, does anyone know the way out of this fucking place? You'd look over and see the bitch be good half absorbed by the arm, but it's clear the obliterator virus doesn't like wood. It's trying to eat it, but doesn't quite know how. Slag just looks over and swats it, muttering out a chastisement. Ah, Slag, did I have my uh, stick back? then extends it and speaks. I can show you the way, but first I would like to have at least a few words, a few last words, Teskis, in private. Aye, of course. Lead the way, big man. Teskis takes the stick and puts it somewhere in his robes. In, the, in reality, he'd probably clip it onto his belt or something. And the war, well, he just kind of slips it into one of the armholes. There you go.
Sphere stands up, picks up both of her axes, and gestures goodbye. Andy, you've got lines. Right, sorry. <laughs> I'm just stuck in my feet all food. No worries. <clears throat> uh, which one are my lines? Uh, middle. After oh. she picks up both her axes and gestures goodbye. Oh, <clears throat> thank you. I get the feeling we'll be meeting again someday. Before her wings unfurl and she rockets up. Out and the way, far into the distance. More pep in her step, as you can tell. She's at least slightly happier at the progress that's been made compared to how she was when you two first met. And now I roll something. Nope! No, no, Tescus is frail boy. <laughs> he gets fucking knocked off his feet like a leaf. Slag doesn't even fucking flinch as you get sent flying like a tree in a nuclear explosion. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! I love I... how much Sphere just wears promotions on her sleeve. Hey, it's quite nice. Yeah, it is. It very is nice. Zoom! Meow! Most demons are that way. It's a rare one, or a powerful one, who's trained to hide their emotions. It's a skill they must learn unless they are of a certain cloth. He obliterates size and walks over to Tescus, exaggerating exasperation as he reaches over to help Tescus up with his power claw. The tech priest is slightly annoyed, muttering curses to himself as he picks himself up and is picked up with by the uh, obliterator. I swear to god, if another fucking demon knocks me off my feet, I am going to grab a chunk of warp stone and drag it into the warp so big that it turns the fucking eye of terror inside out! I am tired of being reminded how physically frail I am. 
Show you the way out. First, two last things. All right, let's say that. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just. Browsing through some memes mm. about this one. So, if I leave the ward and Candy isn't there, I am going to track you down and eat you alive. That isn't a threat, that's a promise. Just consider it an extra motivation to protect your life. I would give the same message to the rest of the fleet, but they aren't here. You are. So protect her with your life, or else I am going to lose my fucking shit, and no one is going to survive that. Hey, that's understandable. Two, remember that third last thing I asked you to do for me that I couldn't elaborate on? Ah, uh, yes. Tex, what was that third? Tex, uh, what was that third last thing? Because I don't fucking remember, and I've got the fucking thing that means I have complete memory or total recall or whatever, but I don't fucking remember. I need to keep fucking notes. Yes. Ah, right. The third and final thing. Oh boy. Uh, hi. I remember you not explaining it. What is it?
Why is the food in Studio Ghibli movies look so delicious? Um, because Ghibli is fucking beautiful. It really is. I'm so glad I decided to go to a local diner for breakfast. Found out I love the chicken fried steak. Nice. But I found out by accident on Monday, actually. I walked home that day and decided, you know what? I'm going to go eat lunch. I'm going to eat breakfast there. And instead of getting my regular, the lady ended up getting me my regular plus some chicken fried steak. Nice. With this nice, delicious gravy as well, so... You see upon his left shoulder, which is still his body and not the obliterator virus, a LAS pistol formed at the end of his form. He then raises up his right arm, the power field of his claws roaring to life as he brings it down and severs it from with the and severs it from his form with one fell swing. It lops off, springing an entire spray of foul blackish virus infested blood as he howls in pain. Every gun connected to his nervous system by the virus. He then hobbles over legs shaking slightly as he picks up the severed piece and hands it over, as his obliterator arm reaches up and crimps the flesh metal, sealing the wound. Give this to Candy, and tell her I'm coming back for it. Proof I yet live, and a sign I will return, no matter what. Jesus fucking Christ, man! <laughs> I, yeah, alright, I'll, uh... Jesus Christ, that's a lot of damage. I'll keep a hold of this thing. Tescus carefully takes the uh, last pistol and keeps it tightly held in one of his hand, in his uh, uh, left hand, the the spiky one. Hi. Ah. So, ready to go? I... Yeah, sure. I'm not fucking surprised you're feeling lightheaded. Though honestly, I expected you just getting kicked out uh, by this point. But sure, lead the way, big man. What is he shooting with the last cannon? No, no. He's shooting a hole in reality. God fucking damn it. 
He's using the last cannon to blast a hole into reality. He's aiming for the dimensional waterfall. <laughs> Fuck, I love that opening thing of Gurren Lagann, even though it leads to nowhere. He just raises up his signature hellhammer as the barrel begins gluing, all of its parts slowly lighting up as he charges it, reality starting to bend as he puts more and more chaos into the shot. And then he fires it, a beam of bright red, baleful light, hateful energy and carnage rips out, leaving a torn hole in reality. I knew it! A thundered mark where it bored deep into existence itself. I... Do you want me to jump through that? Oh, fucking hell. Alright, here we go. Who the fuck is that guy over there? Bloody hell. Okay, get in. I shite. Alright, fucking <laughs> here we go. Yahoo! <laughs> I'm really not gonna enjoy this, am I? You just hear you just hear a voice of candy. Trust me, it's weirder on the way in. Slug looks down and says Thank you, Tuscus, for visiting this old kid soldier. Before picking up the tech priest like a small dog, <laughs> and... Tuscus enters the portal with a screeching cry of "shite!" Before disappearing into its warpy warpness. Aye, that's a good word for it. Warpness. <laughs> and with that, he has been booted out of the material. Thank fucking God. portal closes behind Tescus, and he looks up. Where the fuck did I land this time?
you look over to see what looks like an army of undead fighting lizards walking on it on their hind legs, wielding clubs on the outskirts of a dense jungle. As off in the distance, you see very primitive helicopters with metal bearded faces on their front drop bombs on knights and plate mail on horses. And the giant green moon in the sky appears to be heading closer to the planet itself. <laughs> You then look over and see a beastman walk out of a portal, leaving it behind as he runs off and is shot by a strange-looking Eldar with a bow. What in the sweet name of the Omnissiah? <laughs> oh, Where God. the piss am I? He got dropped in fantasy, bro. What the shite? <laughs> this is some fucking bullshit. <laughs> What the fuck? Why are those lizards on their hind legs? Why the fuck are these skeletons fighting lizards on... Are, are those... Those are skeletons! What the shite? What the fuck is this? I'm... I'm leaving a fucking... Oh, this is definitely not a five-star review on Warp Yelp. You look over, Tescus. How do you see this? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> my boy just got... My boy just got dropped in the, into fucking fantasy. Oh god. <laughs> oh bloody hell. <laughs> what the shite? <laughs> of course that's what you see. Is it that just an organ steals his golden tooth? As he punches an orc and steals his golden tooth. What the shite? Where in the sweet mother of Tonk am I? Slag, where the fuck did you put me? This is not Borealis 8. Is, however, the Materium. You often have very little control of where, and especially when, you end up. Slide Junior. God, if I have to build a goddamn spaceship and fly my happy arse all the way to Boreas 8, I am going to. <laughs> I just I'm imagining that Tescus' body disappears. <laughs> Dare you go into the portal, it's still open. I really don't want to, but I really don't want to be stuck on fantasy even worse. So, fuck it, let's go. Being stuck on fantasy is even worse. 
And it looks like it's the end times, because the moon keeps hurtling towards the planet. So, yep, into the portal I go. <laughs> Fucking yay! Oh god, it is the end times. Tuskus gets up, and uh, Krieger sprints towards the portal. And yes, it is the it is the trench charge sprint. Weapon held close to the chest, head down, leaning forward, full on fucking launching himself at it. Stuck on the fucking end times planet. Yeah, I found a meme that represents me. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Tuskus, you enter the portal to find yourself on a ship's bridge. In front of you, there are three main figures, each the size of gods. <laughs> First is adorned in black armor with a wolf laying over his shoulders. Oh, shit. I am going to fucking scream if this phone goes off in the goddamn background. In one hand, he has a massive club. Beneath him lies a body of an equally massive figure, that of a winged figure in armor of gold and crimson. His hair is beautiful blonde. Before both stands him. Every last instinct in your humanity telling you that's who you follow. Every last instinct in your soul telling you to get away, that he is anathema to you and will destroy you. He stands, black hair, armor of gold, a massive halo of gold behind his head. As in his hand, he wields a massive, flaming sword. That sword, your mind screams, is death. 
A daemonette opens a portal next to you and walks out to watch to watch the show as the one behind you closes. <laughs> oh dear sweet fucking mother of Mary and Joseph Christ. Holy shit, it's the Emperor. <laughs> right. Tessius looks at all three of the large figures before You know what? Fuck it. He's gonna shoot Horace. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just gonna make a beeline for the portal and uh, just, shoot Horus with his uh, Volgate pistol. Just a random shot at Horus. <laughs> uh, no, I figured that wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, that, I, that's good. yeah no. <laughs> you can't mess with history. I, I know. <laughs> All of a sudden, now there is an addition to the painting of Horus of Horus standing over uh, you, Sanguinian. You into your hand. <laughs> the fuck? Where the fuck? <laughs> Why am I just imagining that that famous image of what? Horus versus the Emperor? David looks down at you and winks. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> just now, all of a sudden, it's just Tescus there for no reason. Right. And that's just standing in the background. <laughs> yes. a, a very, just a very vague figure of a tech priest with very shadowy robes standing in the background of, uh, of <laughs> the defining moment of the Imperium. Yep. He then fades out, his skin of grey, his hand covered in tentacles. MOTHERFUCKER! Wait. It's the fucking cephalopod man again. I swear to fucking god. Oh, it, it, it was Zinch. Who Zinch. the fuck is this grey squid? No, it's not Zinch. It's not Zinch. It's someone else. It's a grey fucking cephalopod man. And he's the one who fucking gave Tescus the buff to perception. And now he's I given me a beer to watch the Emperor get clapped. I don't remember this. Dare you throw the beer bottle at Horace Looper Cow? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Do it! Chug the beer and throw it on the way out! I throw the beer bottle at Horace fucking Looper Cow, and I aim for his bald, shiny ass head. <laughs> <laughs> Moments before diving for safety, indeed. I'm just I imagining. Aim for, I aim is... for Looper Cow's bald fucking head. I throw the bottle and dive into the portal. Please tell me you do like the swirl chug first, then you do that. It got all to hit. How the fuck do I roll? Uh, ballistics? just roll ballistics. Aye. That would probably be the best, I think. I mean, it makes sense. Five degrees of success! Haha! <laughs> I just rolled ballistic skill because that seems the most apt. <laughs> there's a fighting moment in the Imperium, and there's just a tech priest there. And there's a tech priest just fucking full ass yeeting a beer <laughs> bottle at Horace Looper <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, you actually missed the best moment, though. No. The, bir the birth of the Imperial Guard and then the death of the Solar Auxilia. Oh, yeah. Alanius fucking Pius. Or Chad. <laughs> or Giga Chad. Mm hmm. Giga Chad the Guardsman. With the yeet, Tescus lets out a cry of, For fucking Alanius! Before diving into the portal. <laughs> He's not staying around to feel the wrath of, well, either of them, really. <laughs> oh dear lord, that is just fucking amazing. You throw beer bottles fucking at fucking Horus as they begin. Horus doesn't doesn't even notice, but the Emperor does. He looks over and sees all before the spar ensues. Oh god. And history continues unchanged. Except for a small detail. 
But the Emperor notices a tech priest. The Emperor just noticed a, just noticed fucking Tescus. Oh dear sweet mother of god. <laughs> and probably saw what he truly is at this point. Aye. A warp corrupted in Imperial Guardsman. And a tech priest. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Rolled up into one. <laughs> also, I was not aware that apparently you got buff to reception from a fucking mollusk. Aye, uh, some, gray, some gray octopus-armed fucker slunk out of the warp when Tescus was running through the bowels of the ship and gave Tescus a uh, buff to perception. I don't remember sometime this, but the, okay. Sometime during the Beastman invasion, I think. Okay, that probably happened while I was grabbing something during that, so... Aye, probably. <laughs> or you just forgot. It wasn't that... Uh, yeah, it probably that. was just something that was minor that we kind of skimmed over. I. I called out Zeech. Tex said it wasn't Zeech. Then, <laughs> fuck knows. <laughs> it's some other warp energy that resembles Zeech and Zeech's younger brother. Indeed. <laughs> so or is a fucking unborn bastard. Yeah, that is actually reasonably possible. But he doesn't really have a form octopoid. yet. Gray skin, octopoid arms, mollusk. No, oh. the, the the unborn doesn't exactly have a form at this point. I mean, I don't fucking know. It wasn't Zinch. It wasn't fucking Malau. I think. No, Malau is Malau very is distinctly gray, a beast. He doesn't have. He doesn't have like tentacles. Yeah, he's Malau like, is very distinctly like a beast. Yeah, he's more your typical daemon, honestly. Yeah. Like daemon from hell, daemon. It's weird. His demons all look arguably more demonic than anything from Corn uh, or the others. It's weird. Yeah, but I think it's mostly because he's just pure hate. Aye. More than anything. So he's channeling that into his demons. Indeed. Whereas the other gods typically represent a certain kind of emotion and that helps influence how they look. Aye. Him, it's just pure bestial hate. Frenzy, Aye. which is yeah. what these is probably Lisa's deep demons looking much more demonic than anything else. I suppose that's true. <laughs> that's just having a random discussion about the nature of demons. Mm. <laughs> well, Tex is describing what happens next after you fucking throw a bottle of horse loop a cow. I just punted a fucking bottle of horse loop a cow and I dive through a portal. The Emperor <laughs> fucking saw me. I don't know what the fuck's happening. You dive into the portal and find yourself on a stretch of rock. There are never-ending scorched landscapes above a ruined sky of green choked smog. You see across the distance gargantuan figures the size of space marines. Gargantuan horned rat-esque figures running around as they chitter and scamper. You see far above a large crooked, crooked cathedral topped with a massive bell. Far off the horizon, you see a fuck-off huge rat encompassing the entire domain as he surveys his domain. Er, encompassing the entire horizon as he surveys his domain. Oh, you have got to be fucking shitting me! <laughs> really?! <laughs> this?! <laughs> Wait, where did you end up? I ended up with the great horned fucking rat. Oh, That's you... where I end up. Oh, you're in the rat dimension. I am in the rat dimension. I. Candy's only been here once, and she hated it. I. You then look over and see two figures, both of which are normal Skaven in Barber's outfits. One is holding a skin envelope, which he thrusts into your hand. The second holds a slice of pizza, who shoves it into your mouth through your faceplate. At which point, they both grab you and put you through yet another portal! <laughs> oh, fucking damn it! This is why I hate the Skaven. This is literally the plot of Sliders, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tex, are you just having fun doing a Sliders plot? He is. This is just Tex fucking with me. Uh, this, this is, is actually really fun. This is actually kind of fun. Oh, I it is. This just reminds me of Sliders, and I fucking love that show. 
I watched Sliders all the time growing up, so just having this is just so fun. Mm. Yeah, that's just the thing. You just don't expect to have a Sliders adventure. Hi. So Tesca's hand. Oh, Jesus Christ. So Tesca's. I'm guessing he probably hit that one a bit too soon. Yeah, I think he hit into a bit too soon. <laughs> oh, you crazy rat man! Get off my beach! <laughs> I have no idea what I just said. Nah. Uh, I got no fucking clue. Trying to actually speak true, like, actual, like, Celtic is fucking horrifying. Aye! It is. Why do you think I enjoy it so much? <laughs> like hearing two, two, two like Irish or Scottish people talk is just like what the fuck? What, what kind of moon runes are they talking? Uh, you don't want to fucking know, sister. <laughs> it gets even more scary when they just start going at it. I like, no holding back, just full speed. Indeed. I do not enjoy dealing with the fucking Skaven. Or the Skaven first. This is a fuck bothering mess. I am going to fucking put myself in the hell. I keep being yeeted through hells, and it's confusing. I don't know which one I hate. <laughs> so, Tescus, you look around and you might recognize it, either by the stories told by if you have actually been here before, or by the massive fuck off I have terror in the sky. You see the sky choked full of movement and forces, as you see a giant world engine next to the eye, firing into it, and at Katie as well. You see far off, in the distance, something that makes your stomach drop. You would recognize that knight anywhere. Oh shit. That's your father's. No, 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 fuck. Well. Ah, uh, this ain't good. Oh, uh, yeah, no, this is, um, this is going to be interesting. Oh, Jesus. This is probably the worst place that Tescus could have been dropped, honestly. Yeah. At least the worst for his mental stability going going on from this point. You can only pray that he sees his father's okay.
Mega Man cheated in a dagger. What the fuck? Well, for some reason, my del my achievements get delayed a lot. Weird. So I completed becoming a big daddy like yesterday, and I just now got the achievement. Knight is doing battle with a 13 foot tall brass colored warlord of corn. One hand replaced with a gargantuan tri barrel cannon, the other was a, with a fist of corn clutching a mace you instantly recognize as a daemon weapon, despite never seeing one before. Despite even the distance, the two of them fight, trying to outmaneuver the other. It's clear neither are holding back, though you get the strange feeling both aren't using everything they have. It's a cl it's close, a brutal war of endurance, as the mutant slings himself around the knight, firing off three shells in a spray pattern, the knight trying to dodge, firing into the mutant, who's fighting like fucking Morgoth, a fell omen, as he fires back with orb-tainted fire, his cursed blood shooting out. The two back up, before charging again, beginning the brutal dance yet again both managing to only scratch the other for the most part. As you see the de the mutant slowly heal, but the knight groan out with each tainted hit. Eventually, Dallas Garrer, whoever is piloting the knight, tries to behead the mutant, who just de-summons the mace. The mace catches it between two massive claws and slices it at the end, the knight kicking him in the chest and sending the mutant flying back on wings of pure warp stone. And the fight begins again. Next to Tescus, there's a fucking flayed Necron wearing skin with marks of corn branded into his Necrodermis. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, no, 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 no. Tescus barely notices the, ne notices the Necron. He's understandably a bit too busy watching his dad. He knows it's his dad, who else is it? No one else could pilot Krieg's glory. Fight a giant warpstone infused mutant. Easily the size of one of the smaller Primarchs. Uh, 
this is uh, not very good. You okay? Mm -hmm. There was just a weird pop, I guess. Mm. What? Yeah, what the fuck is right, Testis? The Kron just looks over and gestures to a portal. Notice he's wearing 3D glasses. <laughs> Why? Of course he's wearing 3D glasses. Portal behind you having already closed. Uh, Tuskus is okay. torn. Tex at the moment. Hi, yeah. <laughs> yes. Thanks for that, Tex. You just fucking. All oh, right. Wow. You just fucking slapped Tuskus right into the worst possible situation you could, didn't you? He tries. Tescus is very incredibly impossibly torn. He wants to go help his dad because it's his fucking dad and his commanding officer and you know, you want to go help your dad get the f fight the giant monstrosity of chaos. Yeah, you've thrown punch after punch hitting him with four liver punches. And then you went straight for the fucking balls. On the one hand, he wants to help his dad. Because, you know, obviously. On the other hand, he realizes that his old man might not recognize him. Might get distracted and his distraction might cause Dalaskar to lose the fight. And he also might become more of a liability. Aye, this is tough. You went to Warhammer Fantasy, the fucking Bridge of the Vengeful Spirit made fight the Great Horn Rats domain, and now here, Gadia. I simply had to include this. I, I know, I know. But he still doesn't see you any less of a bastard for it, Tex. Hey, doesn't make you any less of a bastard. You did have to. You did have to include it. It's only fair. But yeah. Jesus fucking Christ! The final crescendo. I. Tescus is admittedly very, 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 very tempted to try and join the fight and help his dad. <sighs> At which point, I'm going to have to say he probably would. Which is where Mr. Tescus comes in. Or, uh, Mr. Rice comes in. And as Tescus V 
begins to run forward. Mr. Rice violently throws them to the side. The flayed one holds up a sign which says no interfering. Indeed. And Mr. Rice throws the two of them to the side into the portal. Because as much as both of them want to help, interfering is as likely to get both of them killed as it is to do any real good. So, yeet. Back into the warp and back into hell. They will personally kill any intruders the gods them the gods themselves might. Hey. This is just a net this neck around is an agent of chaos. <laughs> Aye, he's just an agent of fuck you. Alright. After all, one cannot interfere with a duel of this caliber. Actually, the fleet one was captured by the Hounds of Corn and used as a pocket shock trooper. Just for a and watch him go! <laughs> one of a handful they managed to contain in stasis. But yes, before Tescus can really do anything, uh, Mr. Rice takes over and throws them th through the portal once again. <laughs> and it's matching Tescus. We end up like... on round three! Or five. <laughs> This is Tuska Smith Rice. What the fuck? That was dad! I don't fucking care, you idiot. We can't even fucking deal with a fight like that. Look up, and you look around. You're like a ghost, a spectre, above a world of cold, frozen rock. Did I make it? Did I do it? Did I do it? Did I really do it? Am I finally fucking back? The fuck is wrong with me? Why am I secret? Not the shite. You then feel a fuck-off huge force propelling you in a direction, like a rubber band snapping as you fly across the horizon, going hundreds of kilometers in less than an instant. Jesus Christ! J-forces, why? I thought we were friends! Oh yeah, welcome to, uh, welcome to uh, what happened to Ganny. Hey. Flying right towards the truck, 
right through his walls and right into your own sleeping body. Back into the moment, right after you were clonked the fuck out. Oh, thank God I'm back. Oh, that's right, clonk. Thank the merciful Lord. I'm back in my own body. I'm not in the fucking warp again. You just see Tesca, you just see Candy shit, uh... <laughs> it is at this moment, I imagine, Tesca realizes he can't fucking move. He can't fucking talk either. <laughs> He's, uh, paralyzed. Shite. Well, welcome to sleep, paralysis, paralysis everyone. <laughs> We're gonna get to see some shit. What is that? What then passes is a few days of Tescus in sleep paralysis. Awake, but asleep. Completely fucking conscious, and yet unable to do anything about it. Unable to move or talk, but fully able to perceive his surroundings. Oh dear god, this is what it's like to be William J. Blaskovitz. <laughs> oh my god. That's an obscure fucking reference. Anyone get that one, eh? I do! Aye! I, I fucking played that game! Hi, Wolfenstein, fuck yeah. Fuck. Now, there is nothing left but the echoing laughter of bursting rocks. A deep, maddening cacophony of cruel laughter and cackling. They know they'll be back. They always come back. It has been a most splendid show indeed, he has put on. But now, it's time for his time here to come to a close. Until next time, welcome to the last thing Tescus hears on leaving the warp. Joy of joys. <laughs> I fucking hate chaos. One good thing about Tescus' sleep paral paralysis, he's going to be able to see the moral fiber of darkness and Fido, both being the only two to really check up on him regularly besides Candy. With darkness refusing to leave his side, not doing anything beyond sh making sure he's resting well, to the best of her ability, and holding him close. Fido rev regularly checking every hour on guard. Darkness also clums also tries to clumsily uh, water his shoulder plant. <laughs> oh god, that's cute. She has no idea if it even if it even needs water, even if Tescus himself doesn't. But it's worth a try. She's at least trying to help take care of him. Mm -hmm. It's better than Santa. She just knows it's best to give fluids to those in a coma. <sighs> then there's just Candy sitting by him. Just probably just lurking over him and maybe telling him a story or something. Mm -hmm. 
just something to help pass the time. Meanwhile, Fiskus is awake. Well, not awake, but conscious. This entire fucking time. Hi, bloody hell. I thought like candy experienced after getting thrown to the warp is bad. Mm hmm That was just mild. Oh yeah. You got the short. You got the fucking long straw. I got the short stick. Ah, oh, the warp does not enjoy me, does it? Oh, I'm sure the chaos gods do, but the warp is a fucking bitch. <laughs> it was a barnacle. It was so ugly, everyone died. The end. Candy. <laughs> wonderful story, Candy. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> but she does actually tell him some stories of her Forge world. Yeah. Just random, weird stories that... If they weren't coming from Candy, probably you wouldn't believe, such as... Eskatari in a cowboy hat, riding a giant rock worm... Into a giant metal structure that was attacking her homeworld. <laughs> nice. His name was Jill was Jimmy Jenkins, a brave son of a bitch. Fucking nice. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Jenkins' guitar would forever be remembered in the Underforge's history <laughs> as the bravest guitar that ever lived. No one know where he got the cowboy hat from. We just know he got it. So we return to the materium. Yeah, I see. That is the end of Tesca's warp adventures. Thoughts? That was great. <laughs> that was great. That was Hell. fun. Wonderful. Horrible. And dear God. Long. I fucking never want to go back. If I never go back to the warp, I will die a very, very happy man. <laughs> that was the worst fucking shit ever. I kid. It was fucking amazing. I enjoyed it very much. But it could be worse. I could have shown him something else. I don't want to know how it could have been worse, Tex. Because I know if you tell me, you're gonna die. You're gonna have it fucking happen. It was so really fun. Now, I'm happy as it was. It was long, Tescus. It was long. You should have said Slanesh or Nurgle. It was very, very, very long. You also had to play a couple therapists. Tescus could have gotten dropped into the fucking nine circles of Slanesh or the Garden of Nurgle. True. That could have happened. If that did happen, Tescus likely would have gone on a fucking brutal campaign of carnage and bloodshed and fire. Because fucking hell, there's nothing he hates more than Slanesh and Nurgle. Except for Zinch. No, 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 that's easy. Aye, Slanesh and Nurgle are easy. Fuck, of course, that's what I said. Oh, Jesus, fuck. It could have been dropped in Zinch's hellhole. Could've... I could have showed some, shown something I didn't. I showed things happening in the Warps realm, stuff from the past, something from the present, but not of a potential future. Aye. That's always weird to mess with when it comes to messed up potential futures. I could have decided to haunt Tescus's nightmares. His mother with her augments rusting, her, her flesh putrid, his father in armor of flesh fused steel. His proud knight corrupted with the eight-pointed star on his hood, as his mother sends countless, countless chaos abominations out across the galaxy. Aye, you could have done that. <laughs> he probably would have fucking killed himself.
Aye. The future is a dark and terrible place, and not one for mortal men to know. This is the reason I live day to day. Because, holy fuck, the shit that's coming could really fuck with you if you knew it. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. The future is a th the future is the realm of gods and madmen, and not one for mortal men to know. For now, Tuskis is back in his body, and he is thankful for it. And if he never returns to the warp, he will die a very, very happy Krieger. Yep. Oh. <sighs> I'm quite proud with this final send-off. That's all I really had planned for Tescus to do solo. A bit unhappy is just to you two, but we can instead do a bit for Tescus waking up here, between you and Candy, with me puppeting Fido in darkness. Hey, that worked for me. Not quite yeah. sure where Grave is. He has busy with work, and Zane is fucking... Uh, Grave is online? He's, he's active in another server I'm in, and then he's probably forgot. Uh, I, I'm just gonna. What comes next is in my true plans requires a full party. Back to normal, regularly scheduled programming. Aye. And now we return to our regularly scheduled programming. Thank. Fucking God. That's all I have to say. A bit of investigation, a bit of exploration, and a good bit of com and a bit of good old combat. Time for payout, shit ass! You get no XP, instead getting the paranoia talent. 8 corruption, 8 infamy, 2 cornate alignment, and 16 insanity. You getting you the aggravated paranoia disorder and brought to the limit. Brought to the limit. Your character's mind has been dragged through the mud. Beaten, battered, and broken to the absolute degree one could only expect from what from the full extent of what Chaos has to offer. They're tired. Tired of fighting. Tired of trying to make sense of it all. And something coming from deep within promises relief that they can take over for a short time in handling the wheel. That they can handle the chaos in only a way the only in a way only the most primal aspects of mankind can. In a moment of desperation, nanoseconds before before hopelessness would have set in, you accept. And he steps forward with a prowling stride. The third aspect of the mind coming forth to join Dr. Tescus and Mr. Rice. The id to the ego and the superego. The three of them can now switch every time something happens. This could be a hit, a failed skill test, a failing in character, or any other such moment of strife. Any time the player and DM both think it would be prudent, aka whenever it happens, they both think it would make sense. Aggravated paranoia. 
When you, are, when you are in a frenzy state, your rage sharpens your mind to a point where you are uncomfortably aware of the world around you. It is a battle of the will to not destroy and attack everything around you, to force out the secrets and conspirators you know are hiding in places that they couldn't rationally be. This trait is often seen in those who have been hunted and tormented by polymorphine users over extended periods of time, or have experienced the unfortunate consequences of traversing the warp without a Geller field. Having experienced the unfortunate consequences of traversing the warp without a Geller field. Ah, yes. That entire fucking escapade. Oh, dear mother of God. All right. I don't think we've had that yet. Uh, no. Tescus, Tescus was in the fucking warp without a Geller field. Oh, right. <laughs> Aye. Sorry, my brain was, uh, big and booze. Yeah. Also, I hit 51 corruption. Thanks to, uh, that extra corruption. And 116 insanity. With Eldritch Tooth known and brought to the limit. Wonderful. Very uh, good. Activated, activated paranoia as well. Since that is also a disorder. There we go. Activated paranoia. Wonderful. 51 corruption. 26 cornate alignment. Nurgle, 7 unaligned. 10 Selaneshi and 10 Satria. That fits oddly well. Now, Tescus and Candy have both been in the warp, but it was always as guests where they belong. Different from just entering a random part of the warp, which is home to prowling demons and petty princes setting up their own fiefdoms. Indeed. Oh, Jesus. Which is why you both were both not just immediately, immediately solely eaten on sight. Indeed. Yeah, we were guests. We were in the safe parts of the warp. Yep. Safe in heavy, heavy, heavy quotation marks. So, time for mutation rolls, I see. see. Indeed. It's 1d100 and 1d1000, I think. If I remember correctly. Yep. Alright, give me a minute. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Roll 1d100. Oh, I Or, I, or, I, what have you got planned, Ratman? We can give Tescus his growth spurt. Uh oh! Hey! That's right! I think we did say that around 50 corruption he'd get his growth spurt. Ah, uh, it's he no longer gonna be tiny, then, boy. Via a very particular cornate mutation. Uh, no. Now he is going to grow to match his dad. Ah. Uh, 
the size of a fucking space marine without his armor on. Jesus Christ, that's one hell of a growth spurt. Uh, yeah. You have to remember, Dalskar's like seven foot six. I know, I remember. <laughs> yeah. Still, it's been going from like, what, five foot? He's five four right now. Yeah, going from five four to fucking seven foot. That's I... one hell of a growth spurt. Indeed. That is the power of the warp. I know it is, but still. <laughs> you at least understand my surprise. Via a very particular cornate mutation. I guess I just bit that fucking cotton nail up. Alright, Tex, what's this mutation of yours, eh? Hi, hello, Grave. Hmm? Was he finally Dragon. here? Oh, Aye. hey, Grave. How is you, hon? Tired. I am <laughs> fucking mood. Yeah, I can yeah. tell. <laughs> yeah, I saw you act active in the other server. I'm like, oh, maybe he's just busy. Actually, how many mutations do you have? Ah, uh, mutations? Um, mutations. Mutations. Okay, so. Ah, uh, fucking. I've got. Uh, where would those be found? Under gifts? Rewards? What? Ah. Oh, they fucking neck. Hey, because I'm not quite sure. Yeah, uh, Tezkis is about to have a massive growth spurt. Mm. <laughs> I, was hey. I was letting you know they're gonna go from 5 foot or to 7 foot. Like, papa. Indeed. So, Grave, how does it feel to have a giant fucking Krieger in the party? So, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> so, so, so finally, he's gonna be taller than Candy. Mm -hmm. Which, if I remember correctly, oh god, what's the we just have the height for Candy? Like six five. Yeah, six five. Yeah, it's right there. Six, six five. So, you somehow have three gifts, but only 26 alignment, but eh, whatever. You have 51 corruption, but only two of those, those mutations you rolled for. The crystal and body one was from the environment, so technically you should have a few more of these. Fuck it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's gonna be interesting. <laughs> we can just grind up for that third corny gift. Alrighty then. Fuck shite. I have no idea what the fuck is coming. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> The mutations, meanwhile, I'm just gonna give you two here and now. Alright. I'm just imagining uh, Graves' boys is gonna be visiting test kids and all of a sudden this. Bro. Of 
Corn's going to supercharge your growth spurt in a way only Corn can. Oh my! <laughs> Cornate buffs. Fuck yay! You're gonna get swole, boy. Hi. <laughs> Fair warning, those robes are going to... He's gonna need some new fucking clothes. Don't worry, Candy <laughs> is going... Don't Nine. worry, he can, he can borrow some of Candy's old robes. The battlefield. Nice. Marine-sized Marine tech priest, Krieger. <laughs> uh, don't uh, worry, uh, you can borrow... Uh, Candy has some old robes that you can borrow. Don't worry. Wonderful. He can... Yeah, he'll just stitch himself some new robes. But, like, they'll work. Aye. But it, it's not like her whole outfit, it's just the robes. Aye. Yeah, Look, it's prob work. probably not gonna happen, but who knows, when you took this giant space marine sized figure, stomp onto the battlefield, power shovel in one hand, chain shovel in the other. Uh, no, Tescus actually uses a power mop. I'm talking about Klaus. Oh, <laughs> I approve. <laughs> 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 it might become Space Marine sized, but he's still gonna be using Fido as cover. Probably. <laughs> yes, uh, Space Marine reference. size. You don't have the armor, though. For reference, Fido is the uh, Ogren. Oh. He's a massive fucking Ogren. Specifically, a Bonin. A very smart lad, and a very loyal lad. And he's been enhanced a bit with some cybernetics. Good old black blood, some extra muscle. And Eventually, he's going to look like an Ed 209. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, now that's another character to add to the list. Aye! Uh, yes, a Chaos Ogren that has a Storm Bolter. Uh, no, it's not, he's not got a Storm Bolter just yet. I think, I think, hold on. Let me actually check out Sheik, because he's got some gear. A dumb as rocks, Chaos no. Ogren. No, 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 he's no, really no, no. smart. He's smart. He's no, no, point he, and shoot. No, grave, grave. Fido's a bonehead. They're yeah. the smart ones. They're the smart ones. I'm talking about if Klaus dies. Oh, this is now another character for me to add to my potential list. Oh, <laughs> backups. Two ogrins. Fucking hell. Hi, right, Fido's got a ripper gun and a heavy stubber. Oh God, mm -hmm. thanks. We got that. We got the smart one that tells the dumb one what to do. Nice. Please don't remind me of the fact that I'm gonna have to be dealing with in the uh Rogue Trader game. <laughs> I'm gonna be dealing with a dumb ogren, a Jukari disguising themselves as a tech priest. Aye. A salamander. Yay! And the fucking boys. And a rogue astropath. <laughs> that fear. is their party. All right. Growth, fear, one, two, three. Type, multiple, three. Description, you grow much larger. It's an unpleasant experience. Each time you gain this mutation, you get bigger. Consult the following table to see the effects on your characteristics. Effects are cumulative. Uh, oi. First level, 1d10% strength, 1d10% toughness, minus 1d10% agility, plus 2 to wounds, now size to 5. And now for the other shoe to drop, Hulking Brute. Fear, Ooh. plus 1. Type, single. Description, you descend into a primitive form, becoming something akin to an orc of sorts. You walked with a stooped gait, your arms lengthen, causing your hands to drag on the ground behind you. A bone ridge forms over your eyes and your forehead slopes back. Gain 1d10% to your strength and toughness characteristics, but lose 2d10 from your intelligence. We're going to alter and doctor up this flavor wise, flavor text wise. Aye, makes sense. Also, god fucking damn it, I just got that intelligence. I can't believe I'm losing it. <laughs> I, I, you know, text is not that, is not going to do that. I know, I know. Still. This isn't, so, this isn't god. Yeah. Yes. So you get plus 2d10 strength, plus 2d10 toughness, plus t minus 2d10 int, minus 1d10 agility, plus 2 wounds, now size cat 5, you also get plus 2 fear. Wonderful. Really good. Alright, where the fuck is my shit? Average range. Okay. For this, however, the dice will sit where they fall. Aye, makes sense.
5 plus 2 is 7. Growth and hulking brute mutations. Okay, transplants. Those are gifts or rewards. Where, where the fuck do I put mutations? No, those are gifts. Right. My bad. them in the same one as crystalline body. Aye, right, thank you. Alrighty, time to roll, slash roll, 2d10, 13, and 11. Alright, so, I think I'm going to put that 13 probably into my strength, because I could use it. So that'll bump me up to 47 strength and 68 toughness. Nice. Now for the minuses. All right. That's not nice. And six. That's not bad. All right. Intelligence. That's four. Four. All right. Yeah. So that works out anyways. That's how I slapped them in. And then, first two are going to strength, the next two are going to toughness, the next two to int, and then the last is to agility. Aye. So, that leaves me with 46 weapon skill, 50 ballistics, 47 strength, 68 toughness, 40 agility, 44 int, 39 perception, 42 willpower, and 36 fellowship. Do note, it's a damn good thing your armor was already broken and removed. Aye, because it probably would have gotten broken even fucking further. <laughs> ah, fuck, it's massive. Hmm? One day, just one day, Krieger comes in and tear me armor. <laughs> I have no idea off the top of my head, Slips, though. Otherwise, you would have been in a world of pain. You can now only wear suit stuff fit for that size, but you can also... I can now also wear Space Marine shit. All right. His robes also just tear. Ripped. As Corn says, oh, you're scheduled for a growth spurt, I Alright, let's see if I still remember how to do this. Uh-oh. <laughs> eh, Calypso, what's in... Calypso, what's your, what's your intelligence? One of you is going to need to check it. Hi. Oh, boy. Well, I'm going to be spending a fair bit more experience on getting some higher intelligence because I cannot be a tech priest and not have high intelligence. Be in mind, he did ask for this. I, I, I did. It didn't shrink my fucking brain. So congrats, welcome to the world of large. Indeed. Uh, Calypso. 
Calypso's intelligence is 52. Now gained a membership to the Gym of Swole. Uh, Calypso, your intelligence is 52, so... Is she smarter now? Uh, Calypso's gotten into 52. I have an int of 44. This is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, mine. Candy only has an int of, uh... Well, <laughs> not just only, but... She does have an int of, like, 62. I, Candy has 62. I've got 44! <laughs> I need a gun. Wait. Oh my god, I'm an idiot savant. <laughs> I'm... Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Alright. <laughs> 14 in. It's Draw, better. You're not fucking human! Ha! <laughs> Nerds! Drod is fucking subhuman. He is on his intelligence is that of a fucking Grox. <laughs> he doesn't fucking count. He makes me laugh, but goddamn. I don't remember Drod, but okay. Drod is Texas uh Cornate Eldar. Oh who is, right. Who is quite literally barely smarter than a Grox. And has no psychic potential whatsoever. Jesus. But they're not blank. He is so dumb, it's still a, it's a miracle he still knows how to breathe. Or how to differentiate <laughs> friend from foe, indeed. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, Drod is not a blank. He just has literally no fucking psychic potential. Jesus. I have seen Chaos Steeds smarter than this, with ints of 20. <laughs> He's dumber than a fucking horse. <laughs> well, it... That's okay. My Hogan with with, was probably going to have an int, end up with an int of 10. Uh, no, that would barely be fucking... That would be like animal levels of intelligence. Exactly. No, like, grave. That would be... Hormagaunt disconnected from the hive mind levels of intelligence. Literally just a feral fucking animal with a single instinct that says kill. Yep. Like, is he gonna start out with normal stats, like probably somewhere in the 30 to 40 and But you want him to become DJ, dumber. He's just erode it. Eventually just has an it just no, bottoms out into the ten. Into twenty to know how to read and write. Oh no. Yep. This poor fucking lad. Yeah, just eventually it's on the end of turn. <laughs> Ongo bongo. Max him on the head. Even, no, the enemy. <laughs> well, I mean, Drod is barely smart enough to talk. Poor Drod, my baby boy. There he goes. One of Korn's greatest artists. Too stupid to live and too blessed to die. <laughs> May he bless the world. Corn so loved the paradise world that he gave them his most re mentally retarded elf. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Oh, God, I cannot wait for the paradise world arc. It's gonna be fucking wonderful. It's just gonna be something fun after all this bullshit. Aye. That's the thing that I'm going for having fun here is I rarely end up getting to play stupid characters. Mm. But most of the time, my characters are usually averagely to pretty goddamn smart. I just I want to have some dumb as bricks for once. And the monkey's paw curls. Ending up with an Ogren that just keeps losing intelligence. Yeah. If that's just your idea for a character, it's certainly fucking interesting. So, Tesco. Balance it out. One of my other ideas is a Slaneshi Psyker. <laughs> End up. Hey, that... Lack of pain, okay? Mmm, no. Fuck Zinch. 
So, Tascus, you wake, quote, unquote, up, able to move as your body undergoes the growth spurt. And, oh, God, it hurts. This is a deep pain. This must be what slag feels like all the time. Ah! The Crack. A <laughs> <laughs> hundred times over. I was Pun, please. Volume. <laughs> Angry. Dial up. Noises. Kenny just immediately <laughs> rushes in. <laughs> that just that got me. All anyone can hear from Tescus is incredibly, incredibly pained by Neric screeching. Kenny is um, just running in immediately, like, what the fuck? No, his crystal is quite literally cracking and Buckling under itself as it extends and elongates, cracks rapidly forming, snapping apart, and then reforming, growing more and more bulk. Just angry, fucking binary. Very, very angry. Just Candy immediately rushing in, You're going like, what the- OH FUCK! <laughs> oh fuck, oh fuck, oh shit, oh fuck. This Candy is rushing in to try and help him. His skull growing a large boon-like brow visible on the helmet. By the fucking gods, what happened to you? I was just ah! in here. Ow. Yes. I was in here for not more than five minutes ago. Pain. The coursing pain. Agony. <laughs> chaos Marine fuses with their armor. Darkness is, to is standing half a foot away, or a foot and a half away, torn between wanting to help and not wanting to hurt him more, as she knows she doesn't know what to do. Forget the aloe vera! Fido has his gun out, just in case Tesca spawns, or is in need of being put out of his misery. Ow! Can't can he's just like oh, I I don't know what the fuck to do. I never seen the this before. The angry cornate binary continues. Both are very very real possibilities as Fido has learned. Thorn himself is playing Tescus's soul like an instrument over the over the one hour and four minutes process this takes. <clears throat> the binaric screeching continues, like an angry orchestra of pain and computer noises. Danny at this point is just chanting. Orchestra? More like dubstep. 
<laughs> at this point, Candy is just trying to chant to make sure that, well, at least the noise isn't being too loud outside the room. Working it like a master potter does his wheel as he elongates and reinforces Tescus's form. I'm it. His soul and his body. God, I just had the had the worst mental. Corn just comes in, picks him up, splats him down on the table, and just starts like rolling him out, <laughs> doing him like fucking putty. The mind, the mind is ignored a bit. Pull him out. Uh, hey Grave, guess what? That's what fucking happened. I mean, like, literally, though. Tescus is getting himself stretched out like a fucking roll of bologna. <laughs> I don't know if you stretch bologna. Get off my arse. Make me watch those, um... Also, uh, thank you for the Aldrich mommy. These are the homemade noodles where it's just like, let him stretch, bam, bam, hold, stretch, bam. <laughs> Indeed. Noodle making. Indeed. This is pain. <laughs> Angry. Angry. Pain. Pain. This is a deep pain. An intense pain. So, poor Tescus, thrice a victim. Oh boy. The Imperium took his livelihood, I took his sanity, and now, uncountably and later, Corn played his soul like pizza dough. God fucking damn you, Tex. Well, at least Tescus is... Back, I suppose. What he wants to be is a different question. At least he is alive. That's the main thing. At least he's fucking alive. If you can call this alive, that is. Oh well, he's here. He's sentient, that's what matters. Now you can just all unload all of your issues and go ca onto Candy and Darkness. Aye, indeed. So! Ah! For reference, Candy is the only one who in character knows everything. Uh, she's the only one who Tescus tells everything to. Uh, stuff about the... yeah, poor Candy has a lot to learn. Candy is the only one who knows the price of the knowledge about uh, the daemon. The one, the price that uh, Desert Storm's help comes with, and the state of slag. Tescus tells all he knows about the demon, uh, the tank specifically, its weaknesses, and that he has secured the... that he may be able to get help from an outside source. But Duff might definitely die to the tank. Incredibly reluctant to call upon this outside source. When questioned further, he only says, I don't want to talk about it. It's a last resort. We'll leave it at that. Duff might definitely die. <laughs> There's a very high chance of that. Okay. That is everything. Tesca shares everything he learned from Desert Storm about the Daemon tank. 
tells Candy everything he learned about Slag and the Daemon tank and Desert Storm and the deal and yada 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 yada. Oh, also, Candy, you have a sister. And that's that. Darkness just wants to help Tuskus, in Tuskus himself. Indeed. Darkness is going to get a fucking hug. A legitimate, non-sexual, in any way, hug. Because fucking hell. She did good. If, if I was the DM, I'd be like, okay, make a strength check. You need to not break her back. <laughs> Candy's just like, wait, what? Candy, you have a sister. Even bigger tits. She's like you, but a daemon. She doesn't oh, quite... fucking Steve! What? Who? I, I don't know. Suddenly a daemon appears right next to her that she punches. The fuck? Apologies about that. You know what? Never mind. I'm off the question. Anyways, uh... We need to get Slag out of the warp now. Like, what? fucking yesterday. It... Like... Seriously. The, the, the ritual is... Candy, I do not give a shit. That man is fucking dying in there. Uh, also still have an unconscious Krieger. I no, Candy's already treated him. We'll get to you later, Grave. Don't worry. Yeah, Candy's already treated just, the Krieger. I'm just, Don't yeah, worry. I'm just asleep, though. No, yeah. no. <laughs> she has even bigger Bahanical Hanukkah lose, Candy. <laughs> Darkness just takes the warm hug and is willing to let him rest his head into her shoulder hair and cry if he needs. But no, no. Steve stays in the warp. Best to keep him there. <laughs> Steve is a fuck. He stays in the warp. Candy just takes a moment to think. Steve is a fuck. But, um... You have to understand that the ritual to get him out of there, there's one component that we're missing. And a component... I... Soil from his homeworld. Yeah. I know where his homeworld is, but uh, it is in Imperial space. Uh, you can kind of see the problem here. If I try to perform the ritual now, it, on this world, even if, yes, it is on this world that is rich in coronate energies, the ritual might not even work. We're still missing a key component. Rituals like this are delicate. They are fine-tuned. A single mistake could rip him apart even more than he already is from how you describe him. You see the problem now. I mean... I... I care for him. I truly do. I love... Andy. That fucking Candy. dumbass, but... Candy. Candy, shut the fuck up and let me talk. Okay. Sorry. I get that. But I am saying that we need to fucking hurry. If you can get in contact with the fleet, I don't know, maybe have them send, like, something small. Like a single frigate or something. Just The last he transmission... Needs get... He needs to be out of the warp Yesterday. That is all I'm saying. Can Candy just takes a deep breath. Last time I got communi actual communication from the fleet, it was nothing but blood. The astropath simply said he tastes nothing but blood. Ah, uh, fucking great. That was the last transmission that we could actually receive. I have, uh, I have been right. trying to well. get in contact every single fucking day. Alright, well. I guess we better get to work getting off this fucking planet then, eh? Yes, definitely. That's the dumbest idea. What? Like their their big chaos ship just plumps into Imperial space. No. Then then the, then the comms go up and it's just Klaus and it's like, <laughs> it's like I, have, I have captured this chaos vessel. <laughs> no. Single-handedly. <laughs> Single-handedly. <laughs> Meanwhile. Meanwhile, they're, they're, they're trying to debate how credible this fucking story is. Because he is a Krieger. Calypso vibes to the screams of Tescus with the Levy Chad. Just vibing. <laughs> uh, 
move. We need to move fast, yes, but yeah. there's still a lot to do. Not gonna lie, I have what I have planned for this world is, is two options. First being impactful, one for the story. Hey, not gonna lie, what I have planned for that world is two options. The first being the impactful one for story, and the other one being something else. It involves Candy infiltrating the world by herself, meeting his family, learning the actual backstory of the one who kept so much secret, seeing why he is the way he is. Which was kind of my first plan. Indeed. Because remember, Candy has error has a aura of normality. Which would help very much in this case. The second is you guys buying the dirt via Rogue Trader, placing in a special order to one of these jackasses to go and get it. I prefer the first. So would I, honestly. Yeah, I'm planning to do the first. Yeah, Surprise no, I would say option A is probably the more fun. Uh, hey Tex, where the fuck are we gonna find a Rogue Trader? <laughs> you think maybe there's a reason we haven't thought of a second yet? Because it's no fun! Also that one, yeah, it's not fun. It, also, <laughs> it's kind of hard just to find a rogue trader. Like, Don't Candy has contacts, her. but she's pretty sure that a rogue trader wouldn't want to, you know, help out Chaos. Calypso, what the fuck are you doing? Like, like I said, yeah, Candy does have contacts. She does have pe contacts she can pull from from her whole life, but that is going to hold up too well. Mmm, the 50 caliber minigun. What the fuck? What? Isn't that just a browning with eight barrels? Uh, it's... I'm playing by a shock too now. Some of them are more than happy to supply all sides of the war. Uh, indeed. And Candy does have context. Oh, they can. They certainly can. Some of them are more than happy to supply all sides of the war. The thing is, those contacts she's kind of using as a last resort call in favors. Right, which is smart. Chaos, Imperial, just general rebels, Xenos, all of them. And also, a lot of those contacts are really good friends of hers, so... Yeah, the same reason Tescus doesn't, you know... ...send anything back to his squad, or try to make contact with his family. Because he knows they'd probably get fucking slaughtered by the Inquisition. Yeah. So yeah, it does make sense that rogue traders are more than willing to supply everyone. It's just the fact of the Inquisition and Candy actually having a conscience. Mm -hmm. So fuck you, since Tescus Acadia. Fuck you, sends Tescus back to Cadia. Please don't send him back to that hellhole. I mean... 
be interesting to see how he turns out after that. Who'll wake up from this? Do I need a roll to wake up from this? No, you no. endure. I mean, I, I, we have stated several times that you have been treated. Yeah, you can wake up anytime, dude. Yeah. I, I don't know <laughs> what I have. I don't know what I have to roll for in this game or not. No. Yeah. Armor is the reason Slag kept his homeworld secret, as the Inquisitors will destroy an entire world if a prominent Chaos Warlord hails from it. If not that, then the entire family line. Just to be safe. And it's also, that's also one of the main reasons why Candy doesn't really bring up her family much. Yeah. And when she does, it's just mostly because she's remembering something. And she just feels like she needs to say something in order to remember it properly. Just in case. Just in case. Wake up, sit bolt up right immediately go into a blind rush for a shovel to throw. <laughs> this being in combat. Also, yes, Candy does have some some of a does have a conscious. She kind of has to so someone well and the relationship will. Yeah. Slag replaced his with yet more chaos incarnate spackle. <laughs> We will get infixed. Uh, wait a minute. I feel like... Oh, shit. Uh, hold on. Tescus, I'll be right back. Eh. Candy immediately rushes out of the room and goes grab and goes to grab Klaus. So... Throws him over her shoulder and carries him back into Tescus's room. I mean... Room? The fuck are you talking about? Or, We're in the truck. Or little area. There are no rooms. Oh, he's waking up! <laughs> There are compartments. He's yeah. <laughs> you made you immediately wake up to can to candy lifting you up and being like, I'll get you your shovel in a moment. No, 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 no. Grave just manages oh. to grab a shovel right as Candy scoops him up. Yes. Good thing I have not lost close. my shovel. Close, close, not grave. My bad. Close. I should note. Aye, what should you note, Tex? <laughs> Is you see Candy carrying another Creedsman again. Hey, I got you a brother. Shovel waving like where's the enemy? Where's the <laughs> enemy? Quark's leggy has grown back enough to show that it's now growing into two legs, both ending with a small paw-like foot. Uh, no, Calypso Grave did not lose their shovel. The crew failed. What? Did they? No, I don't remember it's that. Also I might have dropped it, but I don't think it broke. Yeah, yeah no. no, the shovel's still okay. This isn't like D. Oh. This it. It wasn't like it was facing like a power weapon or a fucking yeah. chain. One weapon did break. I think that was the. That was the chair that got shoved up my ass. Yeah, yeah that, no, was that was the... definitely the chair. <laughs> that was the chair, not the shovel. But yeah, Candy just rushes into the room with a Krieger over his shoulder. A very panicked Krieger, wondering what the fuck is going on. Uh, I got you a brother. What? Uh, he, what? He, he kind what of fuck? he kind of just appeared in the uh, Jack containment cell. The gods tell me to keep an eye on him, so I don't know. He just appeared, kind of like how you did, except you appeared out of a closet. He appeared in a cupboard full of servo skulls. I appeared out of a fucking dolmen gate. What? Well, on our end, you appeared out of a closet. Oh, yeah, the closet opened up into a dolmen gate. Oh, also, Tescus, your weight doubled, by the way. My Damn it. Capacity yeah. for carrying, or my just full on weight? <laughs> Did your budget entertainment thing can't be just. Annoyed Calypso no, noise to do it for entertainment being candy napped. As a result of the growth mutation. Holy fucking shit, that's a huge carry ass. That's a huge ass carry weight. Yeah. Holy shit. 
I now have an available carry weight of 304. I am currently that carrying 33 pounds. So, Candy, uh... Wait, no, not carry weight. Where the fuck is my actual weight, then? It's not on here! I don't think there's an actual weight to put on your sheet. If and I remember no correctly. Weight. You fat fucking crystal ass. Hey, fuck you! <laughs> Slag is fatter. Um... Yeah, there's no, there's no weight stat here. There's carry weight, but that's it. <laughs> so Candy will just put down the Krieger and just be like, "Yeah." So I just remembered that he's on the shit. He's with us now. There's you just put it on your shoe where you can. Looking around, this is like build. Ah, great. Uh, I has a shovel. Kind of raises like, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? What am I? Am I hitting something? He's just, he's just, he's very confused. Can, can he puts a hand on his shoulder. This is your brother. Tescus is going to walk up to the Krieger, grab him by both shoulders, lean down, stare into his eyes, and begin the he's Krieger into the gas speak. mask. Yeah, the goggles. And begin the Krieger speak. In the language that only Kriegers know. Also, no shit, Slag weighs more. He's set size cat six and ate an entire regiment worth of war gear. Yes! <laughs> right, Candy's is gonna be standing there just watching oh, them speaking Krieger. Of. Well, one of them speaking Krieger. <laughs> the other is speaking through a gas mask. And also, not really having a voice. It's the battle shorthand specific to Kriegers. Aye. Yeah. <laughs> Can't just yeah. watch this. It's like, huh, Unless cool. things are horribly wrong, only Kriegers should know. Or at least understand. Unless it's actual Krieger. Actual Krieg... Uh, the language of Krieg is some horrible mix of Latin and German. You You don't want to hear... Krieg being spoken aloud. It's it's horrible to listen to and to read. Yeah. It's it's just an awful language. It's beautiful, but yeah. Well, it's more that it has a lot of similarities to all battle shorthand. Indeed. So, yeah, can't just go watch it. It's like, huh. They are all related for the most part. Well, I mean, Tescus could speak the native language of Krieg. That'd work as well. Does that make sense that he'd know that? I mean, yeah, I grew up on fucking Krieg. It makes sense. It doesn't make no sense. Understanding one is often enough to get at least a bit of the rest. Aye. Right, yeah, just... That's throat injury, so he can't exactly speak. Aye. Oh yeah, he's uh he's mute. he's mute. Aye. I can tell. Mm -hmm. so he is mm. Well, good to meet you, brother. I apologize on you disappearing from whatever battlefield you hail from. He just kinda of... Uh, he had been left for dead, so it's kind of... I mean, that's part of being a Krieger. Yeah. You expect to be left for dead. Well, worry not, brother. I can't say anything for the rest of them, but I'll do my best to help. So I need to be in work to, to in work in twenty minutes, so we can wrap this up. But it's that so we can continue, but it's best we wrap up soon. I think we can wrap up. Uh, now. We got out of the work. Oh, so just gonna kind of point to a shovel. Uh, Candy will look to a shovel and be like, "Oh, right, I promised that. Hold on." 
And she would, like, re pull, oh, reach out her hand. May I? Offer the shovel. Candy takes the shovel, and she's gonna run off to her, her little workshop. And the shovel becomes Power Forge. Yes. Power Shovel! I shall give him the Power Shovel. Nice. Eternal <laughs> loyalty earned. <laughs> Eternal loyalty earned by giving the Krieger a Power Shovel. Yup. You do not have a power field on the twat. Ah, thick. Damn. Come, time comes to face the demon tank. Faust just sneaks up on it. Somebody comes charging Shut out on the You don't need to use an actual power ding, weapon. Ding. You need to use an actual power weapon or, or get back, back to the ship. To need to limit what y'all have somehow. Indeed. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I'm just and yeah. Calypso being in awe by the size of the new by the new size of the crystal lad. Candy upon realizing she doesn't have a power field on hand, gives the shovel back and says, I'll do it once we get a power field generator. For the sake of balance, something can't come from nothing. Indeed. So, yeah. and be like, okay, okay, I can Unfortunately, but, my uh, power sword disintegrated due to Nurglite fuckery. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, maybe from his sword. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that, that, thing, that thing got got. Aye. All right, well, I think this is a good place to stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe once we get to the ship, I can make it a chain power weapon. Oh, Jesus Christ. A chain power shuffle. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, ah. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. For uh, for like a chain power weapon, you'd need to have m like fucking tiny ass power field generators on each of the people. Those don't tend to work. Okay. Yeah, they don't tend to work. Imagine Siege decides to just bless Klaus, turns him into a psycho, and now has has to have him carry a force shovel. Yeah, Jesus. Which, oh lord! That's Please amazing. no. Yeah, yeah. The issue with chain power weapons, like there are a few, a few, like five, because they are incredibly hard to make. Each piece has to be handcrafted. Power fields have to be miniaturized to hell and back and strapped onto adamantine chain teeth that are also handcrafted to be able to handle the entire thing. And then you've got to get the right materials, the right build, the right frame, so that the teeth don't accidentally nick anything and slice the entire thing to pieces. And then you've got to make sure that everything's sturdy so it won't go flying apart to the wrong head. True. They are rare. Hyper complex with replacement parts that are literally non existent and basic maintenance is a pain in the ass. It is a pain beyond pain beyond pain. And you'd need a much stronger power field generator. That's just a shitty collection of shovels. It was just the like a rate on Eldar shovel, he gets a Necron shovel, <laughs> a chain shovel, a power oh, shovel. My jet. It's a Tau shovel. <laughs> a Tau shovel. Oh wait, those don't exist. I'm sorry. <laughs> they take a lot, and I mean a lot of power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. And to that's... even power the entire thing, you'd likely need to have it hooked up to a Laz to a Space Marine-sized Laz cannon battery pack. Or like, uh, I mean, you know those LAS cannon packs Space Marines wear when they carry LAS guns and shit? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you need to have yeah. it hooked up to one of those to be able to use it. Jesus. Imagine, imagine Klaus eventually gets to Space Marine size and he gets to be a Space Marine. And he just <laughs> hooks a whole backpack up to his shovel and it's just like a super power There's actually shovel. one type of weapon which comes with which both comes chain teeth and a power field that's semi-common. Oh? It's the fucking Chain Fist, which is only for Legion Terminators. Oh, right. Because yes, it's a power isn't gonna fist. go with a Chain Fist. Because it's a Power Fist with a Chain Blade. Right. But not a Power Chain Blade. 
guess. It's two weapons strapped together, which even then is very finicky. Yep. I don't, I don't, I don't need like a power chain shovel. <laughs> but I mean, that would be ridiculous. I it would. It's also, you know, you, on the term. Maybe, maybe make that, like a combi shovel with a flamer. <laughs> a combi shovel with a flamer. <laughs> I, I think we should just stick to the power <laughs> shovel, okay? Parents on the flamer start swinging the shovel, smacking <laughs> him and flaming him. And... <laughs> like, no, you, you get me started on ridiculous weapon concepts. I won't stop. I know. Oh, okay. I've, lo I've seen your homebrew for fucking D&D, &D, man. Yeah. That fucking dragon crown. I am looking forward to getting that. Crown of Divine Fury. Yeah, no, that is going to be a pretty... It is a crown Dragons. that Dragons. takes away the restriction on Paladin Smite's level cap. At like a Paladin Sorcerer. Oh, yeah. like a ninth That's level crazy. fucking Divine Smite. <laughs> oh, I think my current class of this is... I, I might be able to kind of multi-class a little bit and get some of that shit going. If they allow you to level past 20, then... Yeah, like, you've got level 20 power, no, so level 20 sorcerer. This is going map. to be a power shuffle with a storm field. Ooh! That's... Storm field? Is that different storm than a power field? are nasty. Oh! They have already... The Texan man has already plot planned in great and many mysterious ways. I am incredibly interested. Tina Ads gets on the scaven. So the scaven. <laughs> you will never succeed. No one can succeed in outskittling the scaven. Many have tried, and many have died. Indeed. The closest I've got is making a Hellgouse. And even then, he could make something better with warp shit. No one outskittles the scaven. <laughs> no one outpizzas the hut. <laughs> For last episode, we outpizzaed the hut. <laughs> no one outskitzels the skaven. Yeah, no, like, he's, he's definitely going to get like a collection of shovels going. <laughs> oh! Franz, I'm going to grab this lovely green shit and some of that metal and, and there we go. With this. I, I'm also just imagining that Steal some Eldar Wraith Bones. Eldar uh, Shovel. Candy will, like, kind of, like, sit down and just watch them, and once they stop talking. If you don't believe me, just look at what Tesca saw leaving the warp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, Grave, guess what I saw when I got, when I jumped out of the fucking warp? What? I went to Warhammer Fantasy. During the end I times? Used. To the beginning of the end times, where the giant warpstone moon was slamming into the planet, I went to... What was that second one? Uh, the second one, I think... Oh, the second one, I think, was uh, seeing the Emperor and Horus sloop a cow. Right, I was on the bridge of the Vengeful Spirit mid-fight. <laughs> right then before the I fight started, the actually. Realm. <laughs> then I... Oh, yes, and I also threw a beer bottle at Horus's head. And I got stared at by the Emperor of Man fucking kind. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to the realm of the Great Horned Rat, where giant space marine vermin lords were raging war. Oh god, Skaven space marines. <laughs> yeah. And then I went to Cadia and saw me dad fighting a giant fucking warpstone Primarch. And then I went back here to Borealis 8. Uh, and I'm back in like, hell. Imagine Klaus gets like time traveled back to the past. That is an example of how you can't out schizo the Skaven. Also, uh, time travel is 100% possible with Tex. Uh, yeah, I went to the fucking vengeful spirit and I threw a bottle of horror. Back to seeing like the the Emperor and Abaddon squaring off. Runs up with his big ass Primarch. Just starts ting. <laughs> I actually told I actually wanted to have right to have rice legitimately I wanted uh rice to wait until the uh this the fall of the 
The fall of the last of the member of the Solar Exilla and the beginning of the Imperial Guard. I wanted to wait for him for that moment. Time travel is 100% possible. Some rule of my characters have done it before, but I prefer to do it like this. Small cameos are sent way the fuck back. Sardinia, muscle grandpa cornate man, is from fucking 1936. <laughs> He got sent back to 1936, dear lord. No, he's from 1936. Oh, shit. Aye, he got sent forward. <laughs> After he was sent all the way back to kill Hitler? Who was also <laughs> the emperor? I was just get sent back to World War II. <laughs> he actually he goes back. The time of his life. Aye. He just spends all the rest of his time on Earth. He also is also 90% of the people in World War II. The Emperor did a lot of weird shit. I think he did a lot of shit. <laughs> now I'm just imagining what's gonna fucking on happen. On both sides. Now I'm just imagining what's gonna happen when time travel happens to kick the candy. Goes back in time, gets to see the birth of the toaster. <laughs> She's not one of those tech priests. Yeah. She's interested in archaeo tech most of the time, but she's also interested in weird warpy tech. Meanwhile, Tescus is Necron Gober. And also, yeah. Also, fun fact Candy has a warp reactor as her heart. Mm hmm. You've mentioned this, yes. Just tell me how that fucking works. Warp. That's well, nice. it's a warp fusion reactor that runs off a piece of warp coil. Aye. Like, you know that, that warp coil from, uh, fucking... But that's all for today, everyone. Get ready for the next <laughs> session. And Yay. the dragon oh, just gets to join, and we have Hi, to go. Hi, Xana! The session's fucking over! Well, I told Candy from Straight from the Gecko, I will be at work today. Yeah, I told him. Then you ping me, I'm like, I'm at work, dude. Ah. I thought Tescus also saw that. I apologize. I did not. It's fine. It's fine. So what did I miss? Just give me a um, uh, What else is woken up? I finished shit in the warp. I got yeeted out. I went to Warhammer Fantasy during the end times. The Bridge of the Vengeful Spirit where I threw a beer bottle at Horus Lupercal and got stared at by Big E. Uh, then I went to the Great Horned Rats you Domain. Wait, wait, wait. You threw what at me? I threw a beer bottle at Horace fucking Lupercal. And he didn't notice? No, he didn't even fucking notice. Big E did. <laughs> Big E noticed. The Emperor stared right at Tezcus, and Tezcus stared right at him before falling through a tear in reality. <laughs> and then he got sh shunted into uh, the Great Horned Rats domain. Then he ended up on Cadia. And then he ended up back in his own body on Boreas 8. What's with the Irish Irish or Irish accent? I'm stuck doing this because if I don't I hit a bunch of cuts and scrapes on the inside of my mouth and it hurts like the devil. So I've got to talk <laughs> like this because it doesn't require me to move my lips too much. Also what's wrong with to get an accent? Also, Tescus is now seven foot five. Ooh. So about my height. <laughs> and a donkey boy. Yes, he is the size of a space marine without their armor on. <laughs> I'm still gonna kidnap him. No, you're fucking not. He is like heavy as all hell now. He, he weighs a donkey pounds. boy. He weighs a what? Tescus now weighs 280 pounds, the average weight for an adult human male. Okay, that is child's play for a space marine. Yeah, I, I was keep more in mind that she. Happy. Keep in mind that uh. <laughs> I was more talking to Candy, who said Tescus is chunk. He's not. He was like 80 pounds earlier. Well, now he's chunky. Yeah. In terms now of like. Chunky. In terms uh, of like body mass, I mean. Bye, Tex. See ya. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna go. Right. See y'all. Uh, hope we could be able to do some stuff tonight, uh, Grave. And yes, you race. Yes. I'm, I'm working on the uh, ancient dragon encounter. All right, that's fine. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Hello.
Goodbye. Adios.